All right, all right. Testing, testing. One, two, three, four. Ladies and gentlemen, can you all see me? Ladies and gentlemen, and I stress this every single week, week in and week out, can you all hear me? Mic check. What's going on, people? What's happening? For whatever reason, my camera's exposure settings are all out of whack. Let me see if I can try to configure this on the fly without it looking too freaking weird. It's like my, my entire face is just like too freaking bright. Hold on. Wait. Let's see if I can. No. Uh. Try and doing this live is rather rather frustrating if I don't say so myself. Hmm. I have no idea why it happens every single time. Every single time I stream. Oh, Jesus Christ. Every single time I stream, I adjust the settings, and then every single time I stream, they go back to this for whatever reason. But I'm 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 not gonna fight it. I'm not gonna fight it. <laughs> I'm just gonna let this be its thing for tonight, and then we're gonna rock out. And see, it just switched again. I I have no idea. There might be a weird handshake issue with the the Brio and uh, the live streaming software. Who's to say? Who's to say, my friends? What's going on, people? What's up? What's up? How y'all doing? Starting out at the top with some shout outs. Okay, we got the homie J fam in the chat first. Suck it, flame. Yo, there's already some flame slander. Oh, and you guys know what I you know what I like. Early flame slander is some great flame slander. But let's let's not let's not slander the man too much, considering he just got back from an incredible, incredible weekend at PAX. This man was doing God's work out there. That man was living the dream. Like, come on now. Let's give Flame a little bit of credit. Uh, of course, uh, Flame being the second person. I was listening to Wheels from the Foo Fighters. My brain is still in vacation mode. Yeah, dude. Honestly, the first couple days after vacation, it's the hardest thing to deal with, man. You know, and then it's 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 one of those things where it's like, damn, you know what? Well, all this hard work I'm doing out here, it makes these vac vacations that much more worthwhile. And this, this camera exposure shit is really fucking with me. I have no idea why it's happening. I really don't like why exactly. No, that's not that much better because then you can barely see me. I, I have no freaking idea. <sighs> it's going to bother me for like a solid five minutes and then I'll get over it, my friends. Trust me. Uh, but we got Hibachi in the chat. Walk on. God damn. I want to be first. Yeah, I want to be the best that best that ever was. Well, you got to show up to the streams. Neo usually puts the streams up anywhere from like an hour to two sometimes half an hour before we go live and that's that's the secret that's the secret to being first my friends or just not being flame or jason because they always seem to be the first ones we got anime j live we live let's go yes sir oh snap we got burnt easy in the chat atlanta what's going on my brother yeah long time no see how you doing bro you still over there uh you still overseas you still abroad man well, how's life been um jason says what food should i order tonight well, I just had IHOP before the stream. I had I had a lot of IHOP before the stream, man. I, I, I got back from the gym, and I was like, oh, I want to get some IHOP, and I, I'm too lazy to just go to the actual restaurant and dine in. So I was like, let me just get pickup. So I ordered through the app. I got my usual. I got sirloin. Yeah, I, I, I ordered sirloin at IHOP. I got sirloin, hash browns, some protein pancakes, and uh, some eggs. And then I noticed in the app I had some rewards. So I got myself a free... Southwest chicken burrito. Basically, I had like 2,000 calories in the span of an hour. <laughs> I ate all that stuff and I did not pass out, my friends. So I don't, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but your boy, your boy Neo ate a, ate a lot of IHOP, man. He ate a lot of IHOP, bro. I had that whole two entrees, like I'm bulking. But you know what? It's all good because I did my cardio. I did my cardio, ladies and gentlemen. We good. But yeah, man, I had a reward, so I was just like, fuck it, why, might as well use it, man. And that burrito, I shit you guys not. I know I always say this, but that burrito was the size of my head, bro. Like, you can't really one hand that burrito. You had to hold it in two hands. It was, it was, it was that thick, bro. But it was, it was a solid breakfast burrito. I'm not going front. Had some chicken, eggs, avocado, some pico. She was nice, man. I'm not going front. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna order anything else. I'll, I'll end up cooking tonight after the stream. But for you, Jason, I don't know. Like, what's open around your area, bruh? We got B-Rex Media in the chat. Good evening, everyone. Unhinged theory for the day. My community college is built on an Indian burial ground, and I think the spirits are haunting me. 
parentheses, I haven't been motivated to do anything. Close parentheses. I, I would I would not doubt that, bro. Anything built over an Indian burial ground. Listen, I, I've seen that episode of South Park. I know how this shit goes, bro. I've seen many episodes of shows that took place in the 80s and the 90s. Like, I'm, there's a high probability that that's exactly what it is. But then again, man, you could you could just be tired. You could just be tired. It could be your body telling you, like, hey, man, listen. Listen. You need, you need to take it easy. We all have days like that. I almost didn't stream tonight. I'm not even going front. I almost didn't stream tonight. But I was like, nah. Nah, we can't be doing that shit, bro. We, we, we got to stay consistent with this. And that's what we're doing. Uh, let's see. So Flame says, Neo really loomed at Final Fantasy VII Remake and said... Oh, he said, looked at Final Fantasy VII Remake and said, the price of freedom is steep. And then went back to... <laughs> I ain't gonna front, man. I've been, yo, yo, Persona 3 Reload has really been testing my patience in a really good way. Because it's, you know how I had that goal of just playing one game at a time until completion? And that is still the case. This TV, I have not played Persona 3 Reload on. All the hours I've put into Persona 3 Reload have been via cloud streaming, which is insane to think about. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm working my way through Rebirth. I'm about to be on Chapter 11. Uh, and then I think there's what, like 14 chapters in the game. So, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm like more than halfway through at this point, but man, I, I ain't going front, man. That persona, that persona three reload, it's just, just, it's too good. It's too good, man. It's too good. And you know what the worst part about rebirth is the worst part about rebirth is that like when the game is good, legitimately, when the game is good, the game is great. It's just that the, they, they fucking throw all this other shit in your face. And I'm like, please stop. And again, it, it goes back to the whole, maybe it wasn't a good idea to stretch this out over three games if the second part of the game trilogy is the one that has the lightest amount of story content because they want to make sure they have all the other extra stuff. And then it's, it's just a balancing act and it's not really balancing it well. But um, still a really good game in a lot of other respects. Uh, let's see. I like Final Fantasy VII, but these mini games are killing me. I almost quit after that feed choke. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> What's up, Julian Phoenix? Yeah, I mean... Listen, if you're looking into this and thinking to yourself, all right, listen, we're, we're just going to dive straight into the story. And they, and, and that's the thing I know because someone's about to bring it up. They saying stuff like, well, you don't got to play the mini games. And yes, you don't have to do all the supplemental side content in the game. That stuff is optional. But when you throw it in the main story and make you do it, and then it just takes away from everything else. It's like, come on now. It's like we were in Costa, Costa de Sol. We did that shit. And then immediately we're going to the Golden Saucer. We got to do this shit. And then there's some story content, great story content. And then again, we get hit with this shit. It's it's just it's just it's breaking it up a little too much for my liking, man. That's why we have side quests, so we can do that if we want to. Not when it's in the main story. And it's like, ugh. And from what I've been hearing, it's about to get worse. It's about to piss me off. And I just I don't I I don't see how that's possible. Like I really don't, you guys. But y'all keep saying, nigga, wait. <laughs> nigga, wait. I'm like, that scared me, bro. Um, who else is in here? We got Rhino54, Kingpin in the building. What's up? What's up, Angel? How you doing, bro? We got Long Live Kevin Samuels, X-Men 97 is peak. Oh, yes. Yes, that is a fact. I don't know if you guys have checked it yet, but X-Men 97, they dropped the first two episodes on Disney Plus last Wednesday, and that shit is fire, bro. Like, no funny shit. Not saying this just because, like, a lot of recent Marvel content's been mid but no, X Men '97 is is fucking incredible, bro. It, it it just literally picks up where the last season left. It just throws you into it. We're not gonna do like 16 recap episodes to get you acclimated. You either been with the shit since the OGs or you aren't, and that's the best part about it, bro. It's awesome. It's awesome. The animation I was kind of like a little hesitant on, and still, it, it doesn't look as good as I would have personally wanted it. But everything else surrounding it, oh god, it's fucking amazing. And I really, really hope that the rest of the season sticks to landing and it's not just like, hey, these first couple episodes are great. Ooh, we're going to fizzle out. But now the way they be talking, like two and three seasons mapped out. And then there's also rumors that they might want to revive some other um, OG Marvel stuff, like like the Spectacular Spider-Man. Not Spectacular spider I wish. But the Spider-Man 94 was thrown into the mix. Could we get a conclusion finally figuring out what the fuck happened? Maybe. But at that point, I get scared because I'm just like, you, you you know how corpos are. They see that something's working. Oh, let's fucking franchise this shit. Let's make it a universe and have them all connected. And yeah, there, 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 there was some level of interconnectivity from these shows, but it was just so small and not the point. You know what I'm saying? 
Whereas now it's like, oh, we're going to build up to this multiverse event. If, if, I, if I even hear them utter the term multiverse again, <laughs> I'm tired of it, bro. <laughs> oh, man. But shout out to my boy Ray Chase. That man is doing God's work. That man clocked into work. That man clocked into work at Cyclops. Oh, let's see. We got Exploit in the chat. What's up? Free the Mayo Game Spark. <laughs> he is free. He's free. After 10,000 years, he is free. We got Black Dragon in the chat. Let's get toxic today. Oh, my God. Toxic? What, what could I possibly get toxic about? I feel like I'm very, I'm very, very clean. I'm very, I'm a very clean individual. We ain't going to get toxic tonight. What's there to get toxic about? Uh, we got Retro Light in the chat. Hey, I'm still doing FF7 Rebirth side quest after finishing the main story. I'm going for the plat on hard mode. Hey, there you go. Nice. Low five Persona 3 vibes. Absolutely, man. You got to love it. You got to love Persona. Th so, even though I do prefer Persona 5 soundtrack, Persona 3 is just too, it's too fucking iconic, man. We got Kyle Rayner in the chat. What's up, Kyle? How you doing, man? <laughs> Two weeks in a row. Let's go. Yes, sir. Uh, we got Steven Kennedy in the chat. Hopefully, I can beat Dragon Quest XI by the time your stream ends, Neo. Time to speed run the story. Damn. Well, I don't think this is going to be a really long stream. I know I say that all the time. But it, we'll, we'll probably go for like a solid, I want to say 90 minutes. Because we did start it later than usual. So, we'll make the best of the time we got. We got Reed94. What's up? Ooh, we got Excessive Games in the chat. What's going on, Joaquin? First question. Name two of uh, Tifa's greatest assets. Oh, absolutely. Um... I would definitely say her resilience is one of them. And then the second one would definitely be how she sports thigh highs, man. I mean, like I said, Tifa's design in Rebirth Remake, they somehow improved upon the OG. I don't know how they did it, but they did. And I'm forever grateful for it. Like, this is, this is, this is why AI will never take over in the way that they want you to believe. Because there's no way AI could give us this Tifa design. Absolutely not. I refuse to believe it. But yeah, shout out, shout out to Tifa and, and, and all of her assets. Shout out to Tifa, man. Mm, 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 mm. See, like I said, this is a wholesome Christian YouTube chat, you guys. We're not going down that path. We are not doing that. Oh, <laughs> uh, Corey Gryffindor is in the chat. Yo, I finished Rebirth last night. We need that Don Otaku slander. Yo, the du duality of this man. He was just like, I finished Rebirth. We need to roast that nigga. <laughs> We need to roast Don to talk. I, well, Don didn't do anything yet. That's the thing, bro. Had Don done something, we could definitely speak on that. But as it stands, he's he's been on his best behavior for the time being. Like I said, the, the night is young. There's still an opportunity for him to expose himself, potentially Digimon related. But we'll see. We got Stanley Connor 32. Hey, man, my name is Connor and I love your YouTube videos. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Haven't touched Rebirth in a week plus because I've been sick. Hey, man, I feel that. Sometimes when I'm... I don't know how people, when they're g really, really sick, they can play games. The only time I can ever play games when I'm sick is if I got something that's like doesn't affect my psyche, if that makes sense. Like, I can't be sick if... I can't be playing games if I got a headache or if I'm just like too weak to look at a TV screen. You know what I'm saying? Like, the only time I would ever say I can play games when I'm sick is if I have like congestion. That's basically it. <laughs> That's basically it. Uh, let's talk about this Xbox handheld. Oh, absolutely. We definitely will. Uh, promises to keep now streaming. Such a fire song. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, bro. Got the jams for tonight. IHOP for dinner is wild. No one eats IHOP dinner. I didn't have IHOP for dinner. I said I had IHOP for dinner after. I had IHOP for a meal after the gym. I'm eating dinner after the stream. IHOP was like a late lunch, technically. <laughs> what's up nkdn he's like did i hear ihop yes i did have ihop <laughs> um hey neo did you watch the quiet on set documentary i tried to but i had to turn it off horrible stuff no i haven't gotten a chance to i just haven't i haven't really had an opportunity to sit down and just binge it you know because i've just always been doing other stuff and in the small increments of time where i would have to watch things i'm usually putting on like a youtube video catching up on subscriptions or i'm watching like something funny or lightweight after work the last thing i want to do when i get off work is just like sit down and watch that quiet on set shit but if anything i'm probably going to do that i want to say uh after tomorrow night's stream after kingdom hearts i got some free time before bed so i can fully digest everything that's coming out of that documentary and it is something that um um, like I said, we, we discussed it a little bit last week. Um, it's something that a lot of us, if you've been following the entertainment field for a while, unfortunately, this is like one of the worst kept secrets 
And just now everything has come to light because people are speaking up about it. And also, again, because it's on a streaming service. So, of course, you're going to have more eyes watching it than before. But, yeah, it's um, it's it, we're, we're seeing a lot of stuff getting exposed this year. <laughs> I mean, I don't need to tell you guys what's been going on in the news. People's houses getting raided and, you know, just all this stuff. And, hey, man. I just I, I don't think that this is going to be the last of it. I think there's going to be a hell of a lot more. And this is good. This is good. But, you know, it is kind of one of those things where and I was talking about this shit with my sister, you know, as good as it is that all this stuff is coming to light. The real fucked up part about this whole situation, this scenario is that. How many of y'all ever believe in the I, the idea that every now and then you have to throw somebody as a sacrificial lamb to prove that the system is working like you guys understand what i'm talking about like all the shit that happened with harvey weinstein harvey weinstein if you dig deep into this stuff harvey weinstein what he'd been doing was like the worst kept secret in all of hollywood people had been joking about that for years and then all of a sudden this stuff comes to light and then it's just like oh you know like yes this is great that he's going behind bars absolutely it is but at the same time it's like He's not the only person who's doing this stuff and not just in the film industry, not just in television. Like for every Harvey Weinstein or Dan Schneider that exists, there's tens and countless more that we don't even know about, man. And that's the scary and fucked up part about it. That's the worst thing about it. You know, it's insane just to wrap your head around this stuff. It's absolutely insane. And then a lot of the stuff that we all thought wasn't as well the stuff that we all probably thought like 10 15 years ago like oh no that's insane that wouldn't happen 10 15 years later we're like oh shit that actually was the case it's crazy man absolutely insane uh shout out to the homie flame who's been a member for the past 27 months of the phantom weirdo tier first flight first convention first meet up with the lords first time to boston and also first time i held a girl's hand i still can't believe it happened and i already want to go back Dude, that is awesome. I'm so happy you had a great time, man. Like, seriously, I, I saw everything happening at PAX East. And mind you, I've never been to PAX East before. I've never been to PAX East, PAX West, PAX South. Uh, I had an opportunity to go to PAX South one year, but I couldn't get the days off from work to go and travel. Um, But just looking at, like, all the fun people had, like, everything that went down at PAX East, to me, this felt like the first real convention convention where I, I can confidently say that people are going to be flying out for this and it's going to be a ton of people because you know after covid hit there was a period of time where it's like conventions they were happening but you know people weren't really going to travel for them like i remember when i went to otakon uh it was like two years after covid that felt like a huge deal because whoa you know like conventions are back and they're still like record-breaking attendances this is insane but are people going to travel the same way like before when we used to have like e3s and you know the thing about e3s you know rest in peace um, a lot of people, when we would travel for conventions, most of the time, it wasn't even for the conventions themselves. Like, yeah, you would go there, you would see all games or whatever, but it was more about hanging out with people, like an excuse for all of us to be together for three days. And then we just have fun. And that's, I think the best part about it. And I was happy to see everybody do that for PAX East. And I, I want to make my way out there next year, man. Absolutely. I've been to Boston before, so it'll be fun returning for a convention. So yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited for this thing happening next year. Oh, Tundex, what's going on, my brother? How you doing, man? The 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 chat. I'm I'm going back for between the actual YouTube chat and then the chat that's on on the um <laughs> the stream. What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? Yeah, I know you're you are no stranger to the PAX life, man. You did PAX East. You've done PAX South. I want to do. I want I want another excuse to go to the West Coast. So I just might say, fuck it, let's go to PAX West, man. But who knows, man? Who knows? Uh, let's see. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I was talking to um, Tundex here. Um, you know, when it came down to conventions, he would always say, like, yeah, yeah, PAX is great because unlike some of the other Comic-Cons or the E3, PAX, you can go there and you can still feel as if, like, oh, you matter in the convention sense. Whereas if you go to, like, an E3 or a Comic-Con, bro, you are just, like, one fish in a fish can. You can't even maneuver. You can't really get hands-on time with games or or with, like personalities and things like that because everything is just so well it makes sense considering it's thousands upon thousands of people man and then when you have these smaller conventions even though pax is huge um it still feels personal like that's the best part about it 
So that's great. I'm happy to hear it's still like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Shed lead in the chat. What's up, my guy? Zach Rodriguez, what's up? He said, I just got back from the gym and got some wing stop. Hey, okay, what flavor wings did you get? I've been having a lot of wings this past week, man. I had hot teriyaki wings last week. Then I had garlic parmesan wings later in the week. And I think I'm good. I had wings twice last week, which was really big for me. I loved it. I loved it, man. Last week, I was I was eating crazy, bro. I mean, this week, I've still been eating crazy, but not as crazy. <laughs> oh, that's why I've been going crazy on that cardio, bro. I've just been trying to keep it somewhat consistent, my friends. Um. Oh, we got Maddie in the chat. What's up, Valkyrie? May I ask, who's your favorite Final Fantasy VII character? Mine's Cloud Strife or Vincent Valentine. Favorite? Um... I mean, that's that's kind of... Uh, yes, yes, yes. I know I simp I simp like crazy for Tifa. You guys know this. But if I had to pick a favorite, I would definitely pick Zack. Like, I, I, I enjoyed Final Fantasy VII a lot. I really did. But then I played Crisis Core, and I saw this man's story. And as cliche as it sounds, Zack just made me believe. Like, he just made me fucking believe. Like, just try a little harder. You know, just embrace your dreams like just 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 take the extra fucking step bro and i was like yeah we all need a person like zach like zach fair in our life bro so i would say zach is my favorite final fantasy 7 character um after that uh tifa i mean vincent's pretty good too yuffie just energetic honestly i i'm a i'm a big fan of every character with the exception of Aerith. Like, not that I hate Aerith. I do not hate Aerith. But I'm like, I played the game. And I was like, okay, Aerith. And then what happens to Aerith? I'm like, ah. But I felt like Aerith being there was more a means to an end. Like, something to just to keep shit going. Not that they needed the, something for the plot. But it just, like, I'm looking at in terms of, like, characters. If I'm, if I am just picking characters based off their strengths and what they bring, I feel like everybody else brings a little bit more than Aerith. That's just me, man. I don't know. I just, I, I just like, I get why people like Aerith. She's not a bad character. To me, she's just not a particularly great character. Yeah, no, Wingstop. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Wingstop. I don't fuck with Wingstop. There's way better options if you have stuff near you but listen sometimes man <laughs> if i ever start out said to saying well sometimes man <laughs> that, that that just goes to show that i might get some wing stop or some little caesars but the likelihood of me getting little caesars the likelihood of me getting little caesars you have a better chance of uh dino crisis coming back uh black dragon in the chat uh final fantasy 7 rebirth Ooh, that, that's not a spoiler what you said it's not a spoiler what you said, Black Dragon, but I'm I'm gonna veer away from it because I have heard some things regarding that thing you said. And we'll discuss that when I finish the game. Uh Big Bruv, what's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> no, we're not gonna do any spoilers. So if you guys if you guys are still playing Rebirth or you're in the, you know, um Rebirth is like very soon on your game list. I'm not gonna get into spoilers. I don't do that. I'll do a spoiler chat at some point in the next month, but no spoilers here. Uh, let's see. We got Benji in the chat. I haven't heard much of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I can understand why Persona 3 has your interest as you enjoy Persona 5 a lot. You know what the thing is, Benji? Okay, so this is the only thing I will say as far as the whole... Because people are, are wondering based off the title, like, oh, why, why, do you, why would you gravitate towards uh, Rebirth? Or, I'm sorry, Reload over Rebirth, even though you were way more excited for Rebirth than you were Reload. I think it just comes down to what both games do in the sense that Rebirth as a story in the entirety of Final Fantasy VII, it's tackling more of the open-ended, airy portions of Final Fantasy VII. Now, what do I mean by that? Final Fantasy VII, the, the real story significance of a lot of it happens in the beginning and it happens in the third act. The middle portion is really you exploring, you doing all these random things, character building moments. I mean, the story is there, but it's not like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the fact that 
I am about to hit chapter 11 of Rebirth, and if you look at it on paper, the story significance, not a lot of plot has happened. It really hasn't. It's just been you growing and journeying with the characters. You know, I, I saw somebody online kind of compare it to like Dungeons and Dragons in that sense. I'm like, okay, I can see that. Um, now the problem is you're translating and taking a 40 hour RPG from the PS1, expanding on it in a lot of good ways on modern hardware, but you're splitting it across three 40 hour campaigns. So you're basically taking a 40 hour story and you're making it at 40, 80, 120, not counting supplemental material. Now, how do you justify that existence? Unfortunately, that comes with a lot of padding. And like I said, this whole experiment, I said this when I beat Remake, this whole experiment, honestly, with all three games, it depends on how they really stick this landing. Because that's a lot of engagement you're asking from people. Even though it is exciting to see the prospects of it. And of course, seeing the characters and the world and shiny visual fidelity when it doesn't drop to like 1080p resolution. All that stuff. Um, but it's a lot of an asking price. It really is. And a lot of the best aspects of Rebirth, unfortunately, are kind of hampered by that stuff that they have to put in there because to make it a 40 hour story and it just it bothers me as someone who i like my separation between story content and side content and i'd like the story content to feel like it's advancing the story and not just using that as an excuse to be like hey we have to put this in here so you know this and then you can go max out and do all the mini games like to me it, <laughs> That's why I kind of like Persona 3 Reload a little better. Yes, it is a Persona game. I know the formula. But it's one of those things where it's like, you don't have to do the social links. You don't have to max out those characters. You can just do the story. I mean, it'd be your, at your own detriment if you didn't do any of that stuff. Um, but Persona is very much so like, regardless, there is a day-night cycle. And that plot going to keep moving, bro. Like, regardless of whether or not you do anything else... That plot's going to keep moving. And you can beat Persona 3 Reload in like 60, 70 hours, you know? So, to me, it's the fact that like, okay, I've put in like 5 hours, 6 hours, 7 hours into Reload. And I feel like I had done a lot more. And it's getting me closer to that point, And I'm getting that sense of enjoyment. Whereas Rebirth, there's just too many obstacles dragging me away from that. And I've heard this complaint from people where it, it, this is the strangest thing, you guys. I heard somebody say Rebirth and its issues about it being dragged out or it having filler content is only a problem if you're just trying to play the game as fast as possible. And I'm just like, what do you mean fast as possible? Like, dig, the difference between whether I'm no lifing a game 12 hours a day for eight days a week, or I'm playing a game two hours a day across this and that, I, I don't see how that's going to take away from the way it's presented. Like, maybe you'll have a higher tolerance if you spread it out instead of beating the game in a week, you beat it in like six months but six months that's like who the fuck is doing that even even by my standards that's insane um but to me it, to me the fundamental problem i have with rebirth is that it just takes you away from the stuff that you'd want for the campaign it's not the fact that it has a lot of psycons and that's fine if you want to max it out but it's like bro i'm, I'm here for a reason stop taking me away from the story and, and that's that to me is the biggest issue with it because as soon as you start getting into it, oh, here, go do this random shit. And then people say, well, it's not a big deal. Like, you all need moments in games where there's a brief moment of levity and things like that. Yeah, but how how many fucking times do you need to do that? You know what I'm saying? Or just have, like, the side content for that. That's sometimes the best part of RPGs when you have that side content where you can just do all this stuff and there's so much benefit from having that side content. Like, like, like the freaking Yakuza like a dragon. Oh, my God, right there. And even then, that game had a little bit of, like, pacing towards the tail end. But, like I said, it's a good game. Rebirth is a good game. Like, me saying this stuff is not... Guys, the way I talk about Rebirth is not the way I talk about Final Fantasy XV. And it's not just because Neo is not 
an angsty <laughs> 2010s guy anymore. Um, Rebirth is still, I would say, one of the better Final Fantasies to come out in the past 20 years. I mean, it's not saying much, but you know. Um, it's still one of the better Final Fantasy games. From a presentation standpoint, top tier. Top notch. Gameplay standpoint, top notch. Everything is top notch about it, with the exception of just that padding and that filler. That's the worst part about it but again we'll see like i said about to hit chapter 11 and then i still have the the, the entire end game we'll see what happens at that point um let's see okay gr scrolling down the list we got blue senshi in the chat what's up what's up uh we got ttv presents i'm playing persona 3 and 5 simultaneously but i'm man i'm loving persona 3's music a bit more interesting Playing both at the same time is crazy. My brother was doing that, and I was just like, please stop. Please focus on one, bro. Please focus on one. And he ended up beating five, but he did not get the third semester. And at that point, honestly, to me, Persona 5 does not exist without the third semester now. To me, the third semester has to be a part of your experience. Because to me, Persona 5's third semester is better the entire... It's better than the entire back half of that game. You call me crazy, but you play that third semester and you're just like, oh, this is well, this is a better characterization of a villain. There's way more impactful, like the thematic elements for the entire team. Like, it's just it's just written so much better. Man, that third semester was awesome, dude. And I really hope Persona 6 like leans more into that type of storytelling, you know, because I love Persona 5. You know, my shrine will never go away, but the darker elements in three and, you know, um, the third semester. That got me. Mm. Um, okay, let's keep scrolling. Don Otaku has entered the chat. What's up, Don? I know you've been here a while, but I'm working my way down. Chronological order. Um, Neo, now that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is done, when do you think Kingdom Hearts 4 will come out? Uh, well, there are different teams working on it, and Nomura has involvement in both. But if I had to take a guess, man, 2026 is 2026 was always my thought process. Like when they revealed it, I was like, we'd be lucky if we get this game within five years. And just based off of how they already released Kingdom Hearts 3, even though they haven't done anything with it in years, they've already released that game. They know how to work on modern consoles. They know how to work on a modern engine. So now it just comes down to the timing. The development process of people working on it so if they started work on that game prototyping it let's say 2021 factor in two years because of covid and everything um i would say roughly probably 2026 bar something crazy happening 2027 but 2026 is what it looks like because they announced it like what beginning of 2022 you know if you already have like some type of a prototype and there's there hasn't been anything crazy going on behind the scenes like an engine swap or you know, like we have this big game that we're working on that has developmental issues that being uh, 15. So, you know, so I'm thinking 2026 if we're lucky. But I mean, to be fair, like Square has been pretty good as far as like their big blockbusters coming out. Like nothing has really been delayed when you think about it. And that's rare for them. Like 16 came out though. They, 16, they said, listen, we're going to release it when it's ready. But 16 came out from announcement to inception two years. Uh, or is it no it was three years um, but that was still on time you know um, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth the fact that they put that game out in four years that's good so I think it's very much so possible with Kingdom Hearts it can come out in 2026 but 2027 2029 2028 yeah but if they can get that game out in 2026 or even before I'd be very shocked I'm just waiting for that Star Wars world, man. Ever since y'all put that mind that shit into my mind, I, I haven't stopped thinking about it. But you know what the crazy thing is, Corey? The crazy thing is, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts fans be starved, bro. Like, because I remember, Corey, what was it like a few weeks ago we were streaming and you said that, oh, this is the the 22nd anniversary for Kingdom Hearts. Maybe we'll get some news. And then someone said, no, 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 no. Let's wait until it's the... Because they, they were going based off different anniversaries. Like, no, if they don't do it at the Japanese anniversary, they'll do it at the American anniversary. No, wait till there's the Kingdom Hearts 2 anniversary. <laughs> it's like, great. Man, people are starved, bro. Kingdom Hearts fans are starved. 
uh joaquin says i feel like you judge me how fast i finished rebirth bro i don't i just want to know how you found the time to do that bro like i'm i was so shocked this man beat rebirth in like eight days and I, he had like i think 80 hours i was like where are y'all finding this time i i need to find it bro i need to find that time says the guy who took four years to beat persona 5 royal hey listen it it took me four years to beat it, but you know what? It actually, in actuality, it took me like a month and a half when I buckled down. So you know, there's that. That's neo logic right there. It took four years, but at the same time, it didn't. It took six weeks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got it. Uh oh. So straw hat. That you see. So straw hat. Straw hat. It's funny you say this because I mean I've seen people marathon and no life both reload and rebirth. But I'm seeing a lot more people who have beaten Reload than people who have beaten Rebirth. Now, that just might be my own anecdotal evidence. But I've seen way more people that beat Persona 3 Reload than Rebirth. Now, that could be because Rebirth has a lot more side content. So people are trying to 100% it. Possibly. But I've seen way more people beat Reload Story. And Reload Story is, short, is, is, is technically longer than Rebirth's main story. So I don't know, man. Like I said, it could just be my my own little circles. Infinite Wolf does have a bad habit of padding out his playtime through mini game tutorials. Yeah, I'm gonna skip all of them though. Yes, sir. Uh, let's see. Speaking of Persona 3 Reload, I met up with the voice of Mitsuru at the Game Expo this past week, and she was awesome. Hey, that's what's up, Maddie. That's what's up, my brother. Persona 3 Reload might be my favorite Persona now. I'm not going to lie. Listen, Persona 3 is the best in terms of the story and the characters. Even though my favorite is 4, replaying 3 has just got me second-guessing everything about my life. It's just like... You know, like, you ever have that moment where you're like this, like... You know what? You know, I go through this every time I beat Final Fantasy 6 and Final Fantasy 9. I'm just like, yo, Final Fantasy 6 is the greatest fucking Final Fantasy game ever. And then I play 9, man. I'm like... Listen, but nine, it just harkens back to everything of old yesteryear with Final Fantasy. And it's just the two goats, six and nine. Flip them upside down, left, right, center. I'm telling you, bro. I honestly can't believe people were defending 15 and its DLC handling. 15 was a mess, man. 15 was just an absolute mess. Like from beginning to end. The fact that you had to watch a tie-in movie and an anime to get, you know, a semblance of what was happening in the story. And it's so worse off from it. Like, the dust has settled. That game is almost 10 years old. Final Fantasy XV was a disaster. The fact, like, you don't even know the main conflict in the game. You have to watch King's Glaive to get all the lore. What? What? And then to understand what's happening with all these characters. Like, you know how, okay, standard RPG trope. But you know how, like, halfway through the game, there is an event that causes the characters to go their separate way for whatever reason. Rebirth does it damn near every five minutes. <laughs> like, that's just the thing. That, it's like every five minutes, you can't use your whole party because they're all off doing different things for whatever reason. Right? Honestly, that feels like it's more the time with Rebirth than anything. That's not a complaint, but you notice that a lot. <laughs> like, it's, it's like, can I have a full party? No. Oh, okay. But, okay, so RPG trope. For whatever reason, there's an event that causes the characters to go their separate ways, do whatever things, blah, blah, blah. And then there's an event that unites them all together again. 15 has that moment, and it's fascinating. It's 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 almost astonishing because when these characters come back, one of them comes back blind, and they, they, they don't really offer you a proper explanation as to what happened. It's like, yeah, look what happened to this guy here. He's blind now. Hello. Huh? What? What, what the fuck did this happen? What? Are you going to show me what happened off screen? Can I play the character? Man, listen. Um, We got to pay some bills here. So can you just buy this DLC? This this episode, Ignis? And, you know, like... Maybe you can get an understanding of it. And we're going to do that for all the characters. Ignis, Prompto, Gladio. And uh, they did one for Arden as well. Who was the, uh, the villain in the game. So what Ar Arden, I will say, was the saving grace of 15. Arden was one of the best Final Fantasy villains. And what kills me about Arden is that Arden is so damn cool and he's great. And he has an amazing, in both verses, amazing voice actors. And it's just like, 
Okay, you know what? Here's this DLC. You're going to get more of the story to him. Holy shit, that's insane. And, and if you, depending on what path you picked and everything, holy fuck. And then we're going to cancel the rest of that shit. And you guys will remember. You guys remember I did, I did, I streamed all of that DLC. I streamed all of that DLC. The Gladio one was ass. The Ignis one. No, Gladio was ass. Prompto was ass. Ignis was pretty cool. Ignis was, Ignis' shit was on point. By the time they got to Ignis and Arden, they kind of like found their rhythm. Okay, this is what we want to do. And Arden's was just like the cherry on top because there was crazy story stuff happening. And dude. It was sick. By the end of it, I was like, I want to see where this goes. And unfortunately, because of the organization of everything, they canceled the rest of the DLC. And I think they said they were doing the rest of it in like a book. Um, I, I This was like four years ago when I read it. Um, but that sucks. Because when you look at Final Fantasy XV as a whole, there's so much interesting stuff surrounding this world. A lot of stuff. It could have been its own trilogy. It really could have, but what we ended up getting was just not that original game. Not what they showed off in 2006, not what they showed off in 2013. And it's so sad. If if there was ever an opportunity for Square Enix to just blow $300 million on a passion project, get that man to Suyuno Mora back in there, get him with a competent director, let them fucking cook on this trilogy and rebuild Final Fantasy 15. The rebuild of Final Fantasy 15. Final Fantasy 15. Final Fantasy 15 2.22, Final Fantasy 15 3.0, you cannot evade, like, let us, let us cook this shit, bro, like, I'm telling you, no, but shout out to Arden, bro, shout out to Arden, but, uh, yeah, no, I say all this to say, my complaints with Rebirth are nothing like 15, by the time I finish Rebirth, bar something crazy happening from now until when I finish it, I, I I'm not gonna feel the same way, I'm not gonna feel the same way, man, <laughs> Yeah, but Arden, Arden was a G, bro. Arden is so fucking amazing, he didn't belong there. He really didn't, bro. Like, you look at everyone else in the game, and you're like, you're fine, you're you're okay, alright. And then Arden comes out of nowhere, and you're just like, what the fuck, bro? Like, <laughs> Arden is great. Uh, okay, so let's keep going. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Neo, I'm interested with your opinion once you beat Infinite Wealth. I personally think it's one of the weakest stories in the series. I still like the game, though. I will definitely let you know once I finish Rebirth, Reload, Infinite Wealth is up there. With Persona 5 Royals ending, I think it's at some people's benefits to at least know the OG ending first. No, it's true, Jason. Because I'm not going front. Without getting into spoilers. I'm trying my best not to. When I beat Rebirth... <laughs> God, so <laughs> why do all these games have an R in it? Jesus. The hard R. Um, when I beat Persona 5 Royals ending, I was like, this feels weird. You know what I'm saying? Because I was so used to how Vanilla 5 ended. And then this is very different. But at the same time, it makes a lot of sense. This is nice. Um, okay, let's see. Anime Gaming Nerd, what's up, my brother? Uh... Damn, no. People got no fucking hope and faith in Square to release Kingdom Hearts in the next two years. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm going to be outlier and says that now. Nah, they'll get it out in two years. If we don't see anything this year, I, I, I'll get kind of spooky. Dark Mando in the chat. I need whoever worked on the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth dialogue localization to work on Kingdom Hearts 4. I can't take these anime robots anymore. I just said the same thing on Twitter, Mando. Dude, there is something going on. Like, I don't know what it is about the Kingdom Hearts games, but if you look at a Kingdom Hearts game, honestly, this really started after Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2 is still fine. But if you look at, like, how they approach all their other RPGs, like Dragon Quest, like Nier, like Final Fantasy Rebirth, the characters just sound normal. They sound believable. It's got great dialogue. It doesn't sound as, like, cringe anime robot -y. And then you go to Kingdom Hearts 3, and it's just like, people don't talk like this, bro. And there's something off with the localization. Because maybe in Japanese, it doesn't come across like this. But, <laughs> like, I remember just sitting through all that Kingdom Hearts 3 dialogue, and I'm like, damn. Even somebody right, like Ray Chase was trying his hardest to salvage this shit, bro. But it just, it, it, was, it was off, bro. 
I want Kingdom Hearts dialogue to sound believable. You know, the, you know what really sounded believable? You guys remember when they were doing that Kingdom Hearts um animated series like back in the early aughts, and it just like randomly resurfaced. Like I listened to that, and it felt like a realistic take on Kingdom Hearts dialogue. I loved it, man. I loved it. Um. Yeah, I know I, one of my well, Jason is here. He beat Persona. He beat Persona Five Royal, I think, in a week. That man was doing like fifteen hour days, bro. I feel it. I mean, it was during lockdown, so there is that. Bro, how are y'all? I man, I wish I could be playing these games for twelve hours, dude. After I play a game for three hours, I need a break. I'm just like, all right, let me do something else. Unless I literally, literally just dedicate my whole day just to play that shit. I would. I would be like, no gym. No errands, no cooking, no nothing. Just play the game. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, one week for Persona 5 is wild. I can understand one week and you put like, you know, 50 hours into a game. Even then, that's kind of crazy. But still, one week for Persona 5 Royal, 130 hours. Ay, ay, ay. Kid Stupefy, I played Final Fantasy 15 at launch and never touching it again, even after all the 50 updates that made the story better. Yeah, no, it just, no. Mm -mm. 13 and 15, you could argue, killed the franchise. I mean, depending on who you talk to, 13 is the best game in the series. I'm just seeing a lot of revisionist history with that game, which is very strange to me. But you know what? People are entitled to joy. Like, I enjoyed, I'm not gonna lie, I enjoyed my first time playing 13. I'm going to go front. I enjoyed it. I was like, this is Final Fantasy, man. And I tried replaying it. And I was like, oh. <laughs> that was like the sharpest realization of like giving into like launch hype ever. And I had that moment with 13. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> but that 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 soundtrack and that battle system were good. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 slander. Oh, no, we're not doing that. No, no, no. No, no slander. We can critique it, but slander, slander, no. So, except, no, no slander. This is this is we're gonna. This is a wholesome stream. Oh, five dollar super chat coming in from John X. Long live physical media, my man. I gotta heart that real quick. I gotta heart that. That is a fact. Long live physical media. So let's just bring this up. That's probably what he's talking about. If not, it's always a good time to champion physical media. Did you guys hear that supposedly? A couple of Tales of games have gotten delisted from the PlayStation Network. I think it was like Tales of Exilia 2, Hearts R, Symphonia. Those got delisted off the, I believe, the American PSN. It might still be up on the European one for how long. We do not know. Now, I don't know if this is a glitch or not. It could just be like, hey, we're going to put these games back up. You know, renew licenses, blah, blah, blah. But still, it is one of those situations where it's just like, hey, listen, if you didn't buy these games when they came out, I'm just saying... But who knows? Maybe they are going to work towards re-releasing them. Fingers crossed, hopefully. But I, if, if I were a betting man, I don't know, man. I don't know. Especially with how Bamco has handled some of these Tales ports. How do they keep fucking up Symphonia, bro? Like, dude, it's so easy and you keep screwing it up twice now. Twice now, bro. Well, technically three times. Because first there was like the PS3 one that was a little wonky. Then they released it on PC, and then they did that other remaster. I just, I don't, like, Symphonia is cursed, man. Honestly, we just need a full remake of Symphonia at this point. I'll take that. I'll take a remake of Symphonia. I'll take a remake of Abyss. Uh, some of the OG ones that never got localized. I'll take that. I'll take that, man. Do the Exilia games need remasters? Uh, no. I mean, I would want them to be, like, readily available for people to play. Yeah, absolutely. But, like, I will take a remake of Abyss or Symphonia if I had to pick. If it's, like, remaster the Exilia duology or a remake of Abyss or, or Symphonia, I'd be like, give me Abyss. Give me. Give me that shit. Don't get it twisted. I still love the Exilia games. I do. But, like, if I had to choose. Because they're not going to give me all that. <laughs> I'm just so happy that Vesperia at least got a proper remaster. Well, mostly outside of the uh, the the localization. <laughs> How if you went and you switched from uh, it switched from like Yuri Lowenthal, not Yuri Lowenthal, uh, Troy Baker to Grant George for the the old and the new content. That is jarring, bro. I know some people say, "Oh, you don't notice it." I'm like, you notice it. 
Because it would literally be, here's a cutscene with Troy Baker. Two minutes later, here's a new cutscene. Grant George. I'm like, huh? It's not a Troy Baker and uh, Matthew Mercer situation where it, they sound similar enough. They could be interchangeable. It was literally so off-putting. Oh, shout out to Grace's F, bro. That combat system was god tier. Is that what it is, AGN? Damn. Well, I remember with Kingdom Hearts, apparently, they, what, they lose the original source code with the first game? They had to rebuild it? I don't, I don't even know what happened after 13.2. I played 13.2, and then I was like, okay, I'm good, Chief. It was a better game in some ways. And then 13.3 came out, and then, I don't know, that dude was evil or some shit. I was like, ah, okay, bro, I don't know. <laughs> uh, at that point, I was like, y'all got it. Y'all got it. But, yeah, no, the, the Final Fantasy brand, it's just kind of all over the place, man. It's just all over the place. Like, some people enjoy aspects of it. Other people will hate it, you know? We'll see, man. I think the only thing can, that can really save us... The only thing that can really save Final Fantasy, to be honest, is if they did a Final Fantasy IX remake, which is rumored to be the case. We'll get that. 13 was so bad, you don't remember the narrative. I, I mean, I remember there was something to do with crystals and racism and Vanille being annoying as fuck and Hope being annoying as fuck. You can't have two characters being annoying as fuck. They don't really contribute much. You can't have that. You can't have that. I'm sorry. You had a cool black guy, but he wasn't as cool as Barrett. But he was a single father trying to trying to look after his son. That was cool. But why he have a chicken coming out of his afro? That's interesting. Um, something about crystals and racism. Crystals, racism... Uh, lightning having to be mopey to be strong for Sarah. Laura Bailey is in the mix. Snow has a motorcycle. It was, you know, there was uh there was there was there were some aspects. Like guys, it was an RPG that starred characters designed by a person and they were getting involved in events and had great music and it looked pretty and there was there was stuff there was stuff happening why do Haley and david sound so great as villains in kingdom hearts 3 but as good guys their performances are so mad i think it's because of the freaking i think it's because the, the scripting bro they always write the, guys if you look at this the good characters in kingdom hearts games are never well written you know what i'm saying like even the ones who we really like they're not that well written. Like, Haley has so much more fun voicing Vanitas than he does Sora. Because he can do a lot more with that dialogue than it than, and how many times you could say, Oh, oh God, my friends are my power, and Donald and Goofy, and we'll just No! That shit is so sterile, bro. But you come over here with Vanitas, you can get some Shakespearean dialogue thrown into the mix. You can talk about how this person, like, like you know what I'm saying? Like. He could do a lot of stuff as Vanitas that he can't do as Sora. Like, Sora Sora can't fucking insult somebody. He has to have, like, Woody or, or another person in his circle do that. Vanitas, Vanitas can say that, like... <laughs> Vanitas can say some wild shit. Let's list the number of games that have Troy Baker and Laura Bailey together. We would probably finish this bottle of whiskey if we took a shot for every game with both of them together. Bro, off the top of my head, dude, The Last of Us... Tales from the Borderlands, freaking Final Fantasy 13, right there. It's just three games alone, and then what? Infamous Second Son. W was she in Bioshock Infinite? Maybe. At this point, I don't even know, man. Freaking Uncharted. Like, <laughs> mm. Daryl said because we black folks don't wash our hair, that's why the black dude has a chicken on his head. I wash my hair. I washed my hair yesterday. I don't have a chicken on my head. Persona 4, Catherine. Listen, we would be all drunk. Yes, Laura Bailey was the original voice of Rise. And then in um, Dancing All Night, they changed it to... Uh, I should know this. I forgot. <laughs> but yeah, they did change her. 
Square Enix needs to come out with a Dragon Quest Pixel Collection, stop with the Final Fantasy remakes, just become Rockstar and port the old IPs. Weren't they doing Dragon Quest like 3 HD, 2D HD? Where is that? Where did that go? Bro, am I the only one who just like remembers this? Like, where is this game? It was Ashley Birch. Oh, I, I was thinking it was Ashley Birch, but I don't know. Yo, chug that doors, my man. Steven, Steven, Steven. We did that last week, my friend. We did that last week. Steven, when David Big Lad is not here, Steven takes over. At least for the month of March. <laughs> At least for the month of March. He's like, hey, man, it's, we're still Irish. Dude, you know what? Guys, I, I think that once I fin... Oh. I got to finish this game too, bro. Dude, I'm not going to play anything this year except JRPGs. Like, I'm sorry. Rebirth, Reload, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Finish up the Xenoblade DLC. Then I maybe finish this? Fuck. I'm not touching Dragon's Dogma until, like, next year at this rate, dude. It's bad. It's bad, bro. It's bad. It's bad, bro. And then I have Metaphor at the end of the year. It's bad, bro. Bro, I'm... Dude, where is Dragon Quest 3 2D HD? You see, if there is one benefit about the data battles, I'll be streaming those. So I have to do that. I have to play that and stream it. Th this other shit is just like, golly... No, we're not playing that Avengers game. Could you imagine that? Like, oh, I played the Avengers game in 2024. Here are my thoughts. Dude, I really want to finish up Dragon Quest XI S. Like, really finish the content in that game, bro. And I've just been in such a Toriyama mood, but there's so many other games that I have to play. Hey, what's up, Ghost Fixer? How you doing? Guys, I just realized we've been streaming for an hour and... I didn't even do the intro. And no one has reminded me to do the intro. Hey, man, we vibing tonight. I respect that. I respect that. How's it going, you guys? How, how the hell are you guys doing? Happy happy, happy Tuesday. It's uh, it's 9 o'clock at night over here on the East Coast. How's everybody doing? How was your week, guys? How's your week been? How's life? How's work? How's the kids? Uh, did you strap on before you hung out with that one girl? Um, freaking what's his name's gonna come to that saying? It's a strap on. I don't know what that. How y'all doing? I almost forgot it was a Tuesday. Yeah, it'd be a long week like that. But what y'all been up to? You good, Neil? I'm in the same boat. It's been JRPG gaming all year. Absolutely. Dude, yo, Corey, I do want to play Kakarot as well. You know what the funny thing is? Artsy Avanti, shout out if you're here. Shout out if you're watching on the playback. Artsy Avanti, you guys remember he donated for us to play that on stream? And he was like, I just want to watch you guys play a Dragon Ball game. We're like, yeah, fuck it, we'll play it. We bought the game. We started streaming it. We were, I think, two hours in. And Artsy Avanti was like, can we play something else? Like, I'm not fucking with this. I was dying because he donated for that shit. What's up, Pierre? How you doing? Pierre was probably there during that stream. We were all there like, yeah, we go, Chief. But now I feel like we have to... We have to revisit it just for the memories and the nostalgia, man. Like someone said it was like a Budokai. No, someone said it was like Legacy of Goku HD. And I was like, really? So I don't know, man. Because, you know, because like the last anime game that I played to completion was uh, Storm 4. And I was very disappointed in Storm 4. So who knows? Dragon Ball Z Kakarot might be that anime game that I just like, you know, how you have that one game that you just like. Yeah, like yeah, that palate cleanser, that in between game, you know, it might be that. It could be that for me. But the the problem the problem I have with that, you guys, is I don't have any in between games. <laughs> I can't have an in between game because the next game I play is a big ass fucking game, you know. And that's a that's a great thing because they're all good games. But I, if if I think I ever got to the point where I was burnt out, I'd probably put on like a Kakarot or some shit. <laughs> Damn, he said, I'm going to be very honest. Legacy of Goku is probably still better than Kakarot. My God. Damn, Kakarot is so mid. Kakarot is okay. <laughs> the spamming of Kakarot is annoying. Jesus. <laughs> what the fuck? Storm 4 is 100 times better than Storm Ass Connections. Yo, dude. You know what the funny thing about that game is? 
Like, I remember I just did one tweet about that game being like, yo, this is fucking crazy. And I, I ended up being cool with the guy who voices um uh somebody from Boruto. Starts with a K. I don't watch Boruto. But I ended up being cool with the voice actor because we were both talking about this shit. It's crazy. <laughs> oh. Do you ever go back and play retro games? Honestly, it depends. It depends on the mood. More often than not, I'm always playing something new that comes out because there's just always a lot of shit to play. But every now and then I get into a mood. Like, um, I was this close to buying Chrono Trigger on my iPhone. Why? Because I just want to. <laughs> you know, I have the game on, on um freaking Steam. You know, I could emulate it if I wanted the DS version. But sometimes I just want to do that. But I I think you're talking in the sense that, like, retro games, you think more on, like, the original hardware? I mean, all my stuff is in storage, so unless I brought it downstairs, I can't really do that. But, yeah, no, I, every now and then I'll play, like, a, a Chrono Trigger, a Final Fantasy VI, uh, mainly RPGs. I play a lot of old retro RPGs. Um, if I'm ever in, like, in a party setting, like, hanging out with friends, um, we'll all play, like, a like old school Mario Party. Um, I, you know, that's one of the things about having the switch. I still really haven't done a lot of, I haven't really used like the NSO online and played a lot of those OG games, which I, I really need to do that because it's just so convenient. Dude, Katana zero is fucking a masterpiece, bro. If y'all have not played Katana zero, play it. It's on Xbox it's on PlayStation. No, it's not on PlayStation. It's on Xbox. It's on switch and it's on PC. It's not on PlayStation though. Yeah, I think that's the dude, Steven. The Walmart in walking distance from my house has copies of Star Ocean 2 for both the PS5 and Switch. Really tempted to go and get them since it's shockingly hard to find both. Ooh, I would definitely do that, especially if it's in walking distance. Yeah, you got to you gotta live stream that, bro. Yo. I had, I think it was Mario Party 6 on the GameCube. That shit was fun. The, the new Mario Party games that have come out, like, from the Wii onwards have been... Uh, Cock a doo doo butter, but don't tell that to Don Otaku. He 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 wrote his college uh, his grad school dissertation on why Mario Party is an underrated gem. So it would, <laughs> Corey, it, it a character that starts with a K. I know that much. Hold on, let me let me look up his name so I can just be. Uh, Maddie mentioned me in his story. Hey, look at that photo Maddie used of me. <laughs> Look at that photo Maddie used to me. Yes, sir. Look at that guy. Shout out to my G. Shout out to my G Maddie. Um Let me find this dude right now. I think his name was What the What the fuck was his name? I forgot his name. Somebody's gonna find it before me. Ka Kawaki? Is that the character's name? Kawaki? Kawaki? Kawaki. I said Kawaki. <laughs> Kawaki. Yeah, I think it's Kawaki. Now, where is his... Vo yeah, his his voice actor is Michael Schwabi. Yeah, he cool. We cool peeps. We cool peeps now. Because we were just talking about what the fuck happened in this game. And he's like, listen, I don't know what they did with this. <laughs> I was like, hey, there you go. Nah, man, but they got to bring back a good Mario Party. That's what they need to do. Oh, yeah, that Sparking Zero gameplay is looking hot, guys. That shit is looking amazing, but at the same time, I'm worried because it's Bamco. <laughs> I just don't be trusting Bamco, bro. If there's one game that they cannot fuck up, it's this game. But we'll see. Um, been thinking about hooking up my 360 to play Chronicles of Riddick and the Budokai Trilogy. Dude, there is a shocking amount of PS3 and 360 games that are just not backwards compatible. They're stuck in 7th Gen Jail. And every now and then I want to replay them. Because technically those are retro systems now, if y'all can believe it or not. There are retro systems, the PS3 and the 360, even though they're still modern and you can hook them up to the internet, they're still retro because them shits is almost 20 years old. And when we got on YouTube in 2006, there was less time between the Wii and the Super Nintendo than there is now between the Wii and the Switch 2 when it comes out. That's crazy. This man was thinking of Kawakami. Hey, yo, this man, Jason. Neo's just grilling Don. I'm not grilling Don. Don, I put Don in the air fryer. Did you hear about the bridge that collapsed in Baltimore? Yo, I don't know if you guys saw that, but uh, a cargo ship 
collided into this huge bridge in Baltimore that's, I think, almost two miles in length and took down the whole bridge. And there's video footage of this, guys. It's insane to think about that a whole bridge just came down like that. It's crazy, man. Well, the thing about making things backwards compatible is that it comes down to... Honestly, it's, it's logistics at the end of the day for these companies. Well, in the in the case of PlayStation, for the longest time, what stopped them from doing backwards compatibility is just the architecture from the cell architecture to x86. It's it's a headache. It's a nightmare. It's a hassle. Like, look how long it's taken to get PS3 emulation up and running, and it's still not perfect on PCs. So that's a logistics thing. But on Xbox's side of things, it's more from a cost point of view because in order for them to do the entire process of bringing those games forward, do emulation, all that stuff. There's a lot of R&D that has to go into that, making sure all the games work and they run across all the new Xbox consoles, whether it's Xbox One, Series X, Series S. Um, and then from there, being you have to find a way to make some type of money to recoup the dev costs because they, they don't just do this shit out of the kindness of their heart. So they want to put those games out on digital storefronts. And in order to do that, you have to have the licensing. Now, how do you do that? Well, what happens is you have this game. You see it's a very popular game and people like. You go track down the publisher and you negotiate a deal to put this game available on the storefront because these games don't exist indefinitely. Everything is licensed. So you put those games on the storefront. And then you make whatever money you make off of it, which is going to be very little in this case because people say they clamor for backwards compatibility, but they really don't use it that often. I mean, it's one of those things that's cool to have, but are people going to do that as opposed to buying new games? No, they're not going to. It's just one of the things we wish we had in, in just the background. Um, but in the case of a lot of those OG games that we love, some of those publishers don't exist anymore. Some of those studios do not exist anymore. So how do you bring those games back? Well, you do what you can, which is why you have a lot of popular games on Xbox backwards compatible. Then you have a lot of games that are just like, why is this here? And you're like, oh, because this company res rescued the rights for this game. And now they can renegotiate the deal and put it on the service. So it's one of those things where I always say either emulate the games or track down the original hardware in the games if you can. But it would be awesome if we had I right, just... A one-stop solution. Just put the game in the system and it plays it. That'd be nice. Yeah, dude. Honestly, like, I would love to play, like, the OG Budokai Tenkaichi games or the OG Budokai games or the Clash of Ninja games. That'd be sick. But the fact that we had an HD collection... You guys got to think about this for a second. We had an HD collection for the Budokai games. That does not fucking happen. <laughs> like, when you just look at anime games in general, they don't ever really bring old stuff forward because it's always been a licensed niche so for them to bring the first three games well in this case one and three they just <laughs> pretend two doesn't exist which for some people that's a good thing um they brought them both over but then they changed the music because there was the the music composition uh controversy with the composer uh but it's just it's like damn it's still like i still have my uh ps3 copy Somewhere down, somewhere down. Yeah, it's down over there. Um, I, I can't turn this because the, the whole thing will topple. But yeah, man, it's uh, it's one thing I wish. I wish we had more proper backwards compatibility, but it's it is what it is, man. Just keep hold on to the old hardware if you can. Four ninety nine super chat coming in from Zach Rodriguez. I appreciate you, my brother. I kind of want to replay Near Automata. Such good music, but the gameplay seemed off. Also, still need to play Xenoblade 1, Final Fantasy 7 Original, and Stellar Blade. Ooh, well, appreciate the super chat, my guy. Um, Now, how many times have you played Nier Automata? Like, did you only play it once? Because the thing about Nier Automata is you at least want to play the game twice. Because, you know, the game has different paths that can lead towards different endings. Um, and honestly, you find way more enjoyment out of Nier Automata when you go through it a second time. And you figure out all the other stuff. And then you do your... If you don't want to keep playing it multiple times, uh, you find out and you read everything else that happens. And you're just like, wow, this is fucking fascinating. Um, Gameplay-wise, no, I thought the gameplay was pretty good. I mean, Platinum Games worked on the gameplay. So I, I, th I thought it was solid. Seeming off, though? Hmm, I don't know. But yeah, I would definitely recommend... Um, probably out of all three of those games... Well, Stellar Blade, we don't know because it's not out yet. But 
I would say you could probably do another near Automata run and you'd get that done quicker than seven and especially Xenoblade one. But yeah, no, it's uh five of the main endings, I believe. Oh, okay. So wait, you beat it how many times? Wait, you beat it five times or you beat it one time? I'm confused. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, near Automata is great. I'm actually gonna be that might be when I'm not playing JRPGs, I might replay near Automata because I just bought it on um Xbox. Uh, the Become as Gods edition. So I might run through that because it's been a minute. I started a little bit of it and then all the games came out. Oh, they just dropped DC Universe Online. That game is still out? Holy shit. That is crazy. Oh, what's up, uh, Human AI God? What's up, Arsonist? How you doing? The gameplay was not up to snuff with other Platinum games. Oh, you're talking Babylon's Fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. It's certainly a take, but I agree. Um, Neo, on a scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you for the Sonic Heroes remake? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get into this. All right, you guys. So, word on the street. Word on the street is that apparently Sega and Sonic Team are working on remaking sonic heroes for modern generation hardware ps5 xbox series and apparently the nintendo switch successor now as you guys know i'm one of the few people on the internet that enjoyed sonic heroes now is that a perfect game no it is not that game has got a lot of fucking problems especially that being the first multi-platform sonic game you come out with this bullshit yeah but at the same time, I just have so many fun, yes, yes, dare I say, nostalgic memories of just fuckery. Me and my brother playing the Sonic game. This triple, this like three, pick these three characters and go on this. Dude, like, it's just, it's fucking fun, bro. It's got a very special place in my heart amidst all the fuckery. Because as you guys know, there are only like three good Sonic games in the entire history of Sonic's franchise. There's only three good games. So Sonic Heroes, while not a great game... If they remade it, fix the controls, fix the level design, maybe add in some online multiplayer, I would definitely download it if they put it on PS Plus or on Game Pass. You know, it should, it should, was, it should, was, it was, it was, it was, you know, it, it had its place in history. It did, and that theme song. It's fucking sick. Sonic Heroes. Let me not get like <laughs> copyrighted. That intro is going to go crazy in 4K. Yeah, I need them to like remake it from the ground up. Add all the sauce. You know, let it simmer for a little bit. You know, like just give us that shit, bro. Knowing Sega, I don't know how good this is going to be. They might get the people that remade Sonic Colors to work on this shit. I don't know. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is the only Sonic game that's above a 7 out of 10. Mm, I'm not going to fight you on that, Donataku. But I'm not going to fight you on that. But Sonic 3 and Knuckles was very good. What's up, David Big Lad? How you doing? What's up, Cutter Freeman? How you doing? Gaspavelli, what's up? This before the Adventure remake is crazy, though. <laughs> no, this is... This is... This is the... This is... This is par for the course with Sega. What are you talking about? Sega remaking the Sonic games that people actually want to play? No. You, we will sooner see a remake of Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood than we would a Sonic Adventure remake. I'm not going front, though. Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood was halfway decent because Bioware worked on that. That was a halfway decent, different Sonic game. Sonic Heroes hype? Listen. <laughs> oh, my God. Future Redeemed is not forgotten, KY. It is not forgotten. Just like you don't forget to use KY, I have not forgotten that. I have not. I have not. Like I said, after I finish Reload and Rebirth and Infinite Wealth, I'm going to get that DLC out of the way, and then that's it. <laughs> That'll be all the JRPGs until Metaphor. But then Octopath. Fuck. Sonic Generations is the GOAT, and it's 8 out of 10. Ooh, spicy. I feel like Sonic Generations is like a solid seven, seven and a half out of 10. I need Sonic games that play like anything but Sonic games, so turn-based RPG Sonic is cool. It could work. It honestly, Sonic, how 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 often can this dude just run around? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how often can this dude just run and then we just not get bored of it? We need Sonic to do different shit, bro. I need Sonic. 
Well, then again, I don't really want Sonic in a platform setting either. Sonic is a platform. Mm. Sonic as a mm, first-person shooter. That could be interesting. Let's see what that brings to the table. Sonic with a gun. We had Shadow with a gun. Why can't we get Shadow with a gun, but now with a bazooka? Sonic Colors 9 out of 10. Dude sleeping on the game. Sonic Colors is a good game, but it's like it's like it's like a 7.4 out of 10. Sonic turn base could work. It could. Power World, but it's Sonic characters. I see the vision. Just give me a Sonic game where we play as Sonic and his friends, not just Sonic. Okay, so what if I give you Sonic and then 2D Sonic? And then your Sonic forces create a character. How about that? That's the best I can do. Get Sonic into the Olympic Games without Mario. <laughs> Yo, this man got a problem with Mario being in the Olympics. He's like, get that Italian plumber the up out of here. So Sonic Adventure. <laughs> Sonic with overtop stories or why I'm still on the Kingdom Hearts train. Yo, absolutely, bro. But what about Sonic, but he makes out with a human? Think about that for a second. Give me a Sonic game, four-player, multiplayer co-op. That'd be so much fuckery. Have you seen Three Body Problem? No, I haven't. I've heard a lot of people talk about it, though. Wait, can I beat the Tales of Arise DLC before Neo? Dude, no, no, no. Well, well, you probably will, because I'm not touching that DLC. I want to savor that DLC from when I actually play it. And I can't start something I didn't buy yet, so I'm waiting to buy that. And by the time I'm ready for it, it'll be like $10. And I'll be like, yay, it's a good deal. Sonic the Olympics without Mario would get triple aluminum and <laughs> Yo, Sonic Sonic at the Olympics without Mario would go triple aluminum in the sales. Ain't no one buying that shit. Shogun is still the best series out there. I will start that soon. Bring Sonic into the future world like Blade Runner, but hopping from planet to planet, racing the fastest species of aliens. Yeah, you know what? You spitting. I can see that. Sonic, but the game is directed by Chris Chan now that he's out of jail. Oh, God. No. That, that game could not be released in stores. I don't even want to... Well, I do know what kind of game he would make. We don't need that shit. <laughs> Sega Superstars Tennis with Sonic in the cover was a good sports game. Listen, Sonic All-Star Racing Transform, you might not like it, but it's better than majority of Sonic games. That's a fact, chat. Look, 06's story I can tolerate because they know how to write. Most of the characters... Shadow in 06 was at his prime before Kirk Thornton came and voiced him. Yeah, everyone go crazy about the Sonic voices. Like, people say the downfall of Sonic was when they changed the voices for like the 80th time. But I will say, like, when I see people talk about how cool Sonic is, it's always from like the mid 2000s era. Like, the Shadow the Hedgehog edginess, the Sonic 06 was silver. After that, I ain't see people posting about Sonic being cool or drip or whatever. You know what I'm, you guys know what I'm talking about. What the fuck? This man said, Tales of Arise, I tried it on Game Pass. Too much slavery. I got bored. Oh, God. That man said, slavery? Not on my game time. <laughs> I need to check out Project 06 when I get a chance. It's a fan-made port of Sonic 06 to the PC that fixes a lot of the issues. I, I would play that. Sonic Boom. Which one? The one on the DS or the Wii U? <laughs> yeah, anybody who says that Sonic is a better franchise than Mario's on bath salts, bro. I don't I don't understand that. I really don't, bro. Like you see the way people talk about Sonic, you would think that like every single one of Sonic's games are like The Last of Us or like Mario Odyssey, The Witcher 3, like all these great seminal games. And it's like Sonic's never had one of them. Doesn't matter. Both are ass. No, but I mean, I'm just saying like, which one? <laughs> Sonic is better than Mario. It's true. I don't know about that, Chief. I feel like Sonic has better movies than Mario. I'll say that. I'll say that much because um, Sonic, Sonic Movie 2 gave us Super Sonic and Sonic Movie 3 could be giving us some peak shit. Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, Sonic Color, Sonic Heroes, and Sonic CD top 5. Oh, man. Ain't no one bringing up Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Okay. Sonic Riders 4, please. You'll get Sonic Riders when I get Connect back. 
they did do the Sonic Free Riders for Connect. Do you guys remember that? In the wind. Is that how the lyrics are? Like, in the wind. In the wind. Oh, God. I don't even know if those are the actual lyrics, bro. Sonic 3 is about to bust a cap at a kid. Hey, man, listen. It's time. Sonic's growing up with his audience, and I love to see it. I just want them to bring back Chow Garden. Yeah, you and me both. Chow Garden... You could you could you could list all the Sonic games that have come out and all of them have been bad except for two and a big part of the reason why is cuz they don't have Chow Garden. I'm just being real. I'm not saying correlation equals causation and yet here we are. $5 super chat from John X. I hope Microsoft can make Xbox the bridge between console and PC gaming. Appreciate the super chat, John. Thank you. So now steering away from a uh, Sonic. <laughs> Why the fuck did we spend 10 minutes talking about Sonic? Um, it always happens. Um, so friends, let's 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 put on our uh let's put on our, our, our thinking caps, become armchair analyst for a second, and let us discuss the recent uh recent rumors and rumblings. I'll probably end up doing a video about this because there's just always some shit to talk about with Xbox, positive or negative. Um Let's talk about Phil Spencer, old buddy Phil Spencer, Xbox P3. Um, recently did interviews talking about, you know, just like the Xbox business, talking about the Activision layoffs, talking about, um, you know, what's best for the brand in the future, just a whole bunch of fluff. But we heard this man talking about the idea of an Xbox handheld. And based off of what we've been hearing in their industry and the rumors and rumblings, Xbox prototyping and handheld. There were some rumors about the Xbox Surface team potentially being the one to lead this charge. A lot of fascinating stuff for people like me who enjoy the idea of handheld gaming, even though I play the majority of my games at home on a 60-inch LG TV. You know, it's just one of those things I like for the convenience aspect of, hey, if I'm ever out and about, I can play my game with me with this little handheld device, and it's native. I don't got to worry about streaming. So, my alternatives when it came to gaming on handheld, outside of the Nintendo Switch family of systems, has been uh, just the Steam Deck, right? And now there are also alternatives to the Steam Deck. You have the the uh, Asus ROG Ally. You have the, uh, I believe it was like the Lenovo Legion Go. Um, and then there's just a whole bunch of other competitors in the space as well. But for me, it's either the Nintendo Switch or the Steam Deck, right? Now, when you have Xbox coming into the fray, talk about they're making a, a native handheld, not a cloud streaming device, but a native handheld in order to play your Xbox library. Now, to me personally, that is fucking amazing. The idea of, uh, let's go, Qmon is back. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Qmon has always been here. <laughs> um, so, but to me personally, the idea of a Xbox handheld device, a la Steam Deck, where you can play your entire Xbox console library on the go. That to me is fascinating and amazing. I love it because as someone who, you know, I like the idea of portable gaming. If you're telling me that I could just buy this device and I already have my existing library and I could take that with me, that is great. And that is why I think the Steam Deck has been as successful as it was. Not only because it's basically you're translating your entire PC library over. But also the fact that they did it in a way where it's not a cumbersome experience. That is the biggest hurdle I think Xbox has to overcome. If they're building this device, is it going to be primarily Xbox centric where you can only play your Xbox game library? Or is it going to be a hybrid where it's Xbox, but then also PC? So hypothetically speaking, you could play your Steam games or your Epic Game Store games on this device in addition to your Xbox console stuff. Now, how would that work in terms of what it differentiates between a PC game and what is an Xbox console game? I have no idea. I'm not an engineer. I don't know how this works. But the idea of Xbox, a major player, creating a handheld device that can do that, their biggest hurdle to overcome is trying to figure out which niche are they going to target? Are they going to target the handheld PC crowd who wants to take their existing PC library on the go? Sure. But at the same time, 
what are they going to do to make this device that much more enticing than a Steam Deck? I mean, sure, they can probably put this into way more stores than Valve could. They can probably find a way to market this better than Valve. But at the same time, Valve knows exactly what the Steam Deck is and why they're doing it a certain way. They know their market. For Xbox to do this, they they got to be really, really... They got to be strategic with this shit. And I know every single thing these companies do as far as product launches is strategic. But how are you going to go ahead and market this device? You see, with the Steam Deck, Valve was able to get away with selling this thing for $400 because it's Valve. And they have the backing of Steam existing and making tons of money on there that they can do this. Microsoft, on the other hand, even though they've invested all this money into Xbox, bought all these publishers, studios, what have you. What are they going to charge this device at, right? Is it going to be around that attractive $400 price point, which we are, we already know $400 is really the sweet spot for a lot of these devices like Steam Deck. Um, the new Switch that's going to be coming out is most likely going to start at $400. I don't If they can get it any less than that, I don't know how powerful it will be. But $400 is looking at the starting point. When Microsoft released this device at $400, how powerful would this device be? When would this device come out? Is this going to be a part of their next generation strategy where they launch a new system with this device? Is that going to be their Series S? And then there's also the logistics of, okay, so if they have this Xbox device to play your library, what can they guarantee you play these games at? Because obviously it's a handheld device. It's not a set-top box. Can you guarantee that these games at the bare minimum, every new game that comes out, you can run it at, like, let's say... 1080p 30 frames per second are you going to have modular options where you can adjust the performance there's a lot to this stuff but i love what i am hearing i love the fact that phil spencer is talking about how you know it's about gaming without boundaries and taking your library with you and doing all these things it's just it's stuff that really speaks to me and when we hear that Sony is satisfied with what the portal is doing, and they're also talking about making another PlayStation handheld, whether or not this stuff comes out in the next two years or it's going to be saved for a, a, a next generation strategy, I'm excited for it because I never thought that handhelds would be making a comeback like this. And, you know, obviously credit where credit is due. You got to give it up for the Switch and how that, just that, that approach of having this hybrid device take your games on the go played on the big screen and that really giving all these other manufacturers the ad added emphasis to say, Hey, listen, let's do what we're doing. And then valve comes out and they smash it. And then all these other companies come out in the same, like two years time and they're doing great. And now we have PlayStation and Xbox doing that. I'm excited, man. I love this idea. Cause as someone who, again, 95% of my gaming that I do, I play it at home. I play it on my TV. I have an OLED TV, good sound system. That's my preferred way to play games. That being said, every now and then I just find myself out and about doing things, right? And sometimes I have a little bit of free time to get some gaming in. And that's really where cloud streaming on Xbox and then also remote play for both these consoles were... Like, I never realized like how great these things were. Now, it's not perfect. Um, you do have to have really good internet connection at your base, hardwire systems, and then wherever you're at, this place has to have a good connection, right? But the gaming experiences that I've had with both remote play and cloud streaming, because I go back and forth between the two, it's been fun. It really has, dude. Like, I was over at this girl's place last week, and she was watching a show, and I wasn't interested in the show. I just pulled out my phone, and I remote played back to my PS5 here, and I was playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and Guys, it was so friggin' consistent. You know, I hardwired my PS5 here, and then I was at her place, I was connected to Wi-Fi, and everything was smooth, bro. It was butter. And at that point, I was just like, okay, you know what? I see the appeal of a PlayStation Portal and why somebody would. Now, the PlayStation Portal, that's just... Uh, <laughs> like, you are fulfilling the most niche of niche things. Someone like me, who if I'm at someone else's place, I want to play my games on a bigger screen that's not my phone. That being said, I could jerry-rig my Steam Deck. I could download a couple of things, and I could basically do PlayStation Remote Play like that, um, which I'll probably end up doing. But the, the, the core of it is essentially that. People want to play their games with them 
in different places on different devices. So in that respect, I love the idea that Xbox and PlayStation are focusing on it. Even if it's right now just remote play and cloud streaming and then maybe doing a dedicated device, I'm all for it, man. But it's um, it's going to be interesting to see how they approach it because, yeah, console stuff gets outdated very quickly. But handheld stuff, like, unless you're going to build a beefy enough system, are you going to iterate on this device like every three, four years? Like, how are you going to justify it? Like, it's going to get to the point where people are just like, okay, I'm not going to play anything after like year three of the console on this handheld because it's going to be too janky. You guys feel what I'm saying? Like, Nintendo can get away with it because, you know, they're masters of their first party hardware. Um, They were able to just make games that look as good as they do on the Switch, even though that's like PS3 tech when you really think about it. So, I don't know. Like, what kind of tech are they going to be putting in? these new devices are they going to try to future proof it as much as they can and this eat the cost on this device just to get it out there for people who knows man but it's it's exciting man it's very exciting i i wonder how much i i i'm just it's so fascinating because it's like these are two major players like how are they going to integrate everything they've got going around onto these devices man like we already know PlayStation, they're they're focused, they're they're going more on PC. Xbox has been on PC for a while. What is that gonna look like and translate with these devices? Like with Xbox, yeah, there is a potential for a hybrid approach with both Windows and PC, but how would you do that? Because they're just they're still two different ecosystems entirely. Um PlayStation, I could still that be that PlayStation version of the Switch. I can it's probably just going to be that they're not going to try to do any type of PC integration. They just want it to be their own set closed off system. But regardless of that, you guys, I'd buy it. <laughs> I don't care what people say. Like if you gave me a portable PlayStation and I could run all my PlayStation four games, my PlayStation two classics, PS one classics, and you sell that shit for like 400 bucks, maybe 500 at most. I would get that same thing for Xbox, dude. I just, I love the idea of this stuff. <laughs> if you thought the Series S discourse was bad, wait until the Xbox handheld power discourse starts. Oh, God. But yeah, that's going to be the thing, man. That's why I wonder what their approach is going to be. Is it going to be a device that they're not going to try to market it with the console? It's just going to be that extension? Because I... Like the Steam Deck, for example, there is no discourse about the power. I mean, yeah, there's still, there'll be some people that complain about the power aspect, but most people buy a Steam Deck knowing that, hey, listen, this is not going to be my $2,000 gaming PC. This is going to be this $400 device that I can play some of my PC games on. A lot of them not. But I just want to have something that's like portable. And I could stream my games from my PC too if I want better settings. $5 super chat, uh, well, $2 super chat from Blue Century 19. Even if the Switch 2 is $500, I'll buy it. Yeah, dude, it's going to be the next version of a Nintendo console. And depending on, well, to me, $500 is a little steep for the Switch. I'd buy it for $400, depending on what kind of tech they put into it. $500, I'd be like, ooh, that's, that's the price of a set top box console. You know what I'm saying? Now, if PlayStation comes out with that Pro and they say that bitch is $700, I'd be like, oh, okay, you know what? That Switch 2 don't look as, as crazy. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 gonna be fascinating to see what happens, man. But I'm I'm curious. Like someone asked me, like, what do you think Nintendo's new quirky innovation is gonna be for the Switch Two? I honestly, I'm that type of person where I just want them to maintain the status quo, maintain the status quo, make it more powerful, make it more accessible, like streamline it, give me the features, and that's it. That's good for me. But some people are always looking for, like, that next big thing. Like, realistically, what could that next big thing be? Like, they did the Labo shit. That failed. Well, obviously, I don't think they took it that seriously. Um, Like, realistically, what could their next big thing be? Like, people are saying, yeah, they might do proper VR. They might do AR. I, I don't know, man. Foldable switch. Foldable screen. Oh, my God. They could do that. <laughs> But how would that work? You'd have to like, no, it'd be like a clamshell design where you you fold it and then the Joy-Cons are on the side. Oh, God. How would y'all feel if the next Switch came out and it's not a Switch, it's a set-top box? <laughs> but 
Foldable switch would be crazy, guys. When that Pro is $700, it'll be a time for somebody to apply for bankruptcy. No, the most they could sell the Pro at is probably $600. If they sell it above $600, bro, you really have to justify that shit's existence, man. Because now you're getting dangerously close to, like, PC gaming territory. The reason why consoles worked is because they were, like, three to $500. When you start telling me you, you, you releasing a console at $700 starting price and not counting tax, I'd be like, fam, that shit better be worth it. If I see a game at 30 frames per second, I'd be losing it. <laughs> Labo, stand up. Well, a foldable is only really cool in the sense that, like, you want something cool. Like, foldable phones, I see them more and more nowadays. Like, the Z Flip, the Galaxy Fold, all that. They're cool. But are they that much better than, like, a regular regular smartphone like i see people say like yeah, well yeah it's great because like i can flip the screen and i can do this here and i can do that there and i'm like you can just split your screen but no no no, i can just mount it on the table i'm like you can you know you know what i'm saying like it's cool but i don't is it that much better i don't know and the price for foldables to me is still just a little too much for what they offer when you got money like me you just don't look at prices anymore you see that's the thing cutter freeman i'm still gonna be that person when it comes to certain devices i'll look at the price and i'll be like Hmm. Well, what do I get out of that price? You know what I'm saying? That's just the frugal person I am. If that PS5 Pro is a seven is seven hundred dollars, I'm upgrading to a forty eighty. You might as well, bro. Hey, take it easy, Zach Rodriguez. Have a go, man. Now nah, you got to drop the price of the base model and hit that five fifty six in a range, which I don't see happening. Well, that's the thing. Read ninety four. If this was Previous generations, oh yeah, absolutely. They would drop the OG PS5 to 400, maybe 350, and then they release this Pro at the original price. That's what Xbox and uh, PlayStation did for last gen with the 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 half gen refreshes. Unfortunately, because of COVID and inflation and everything, the prices that they're selling the systems at now, they they can't take any more of a loss on it. They really can't. And I, and I'm not trying to like damage control for a billion dollar corporation but literally them releasing the consoles and selling it as is is just so they can at least make some money off of it even though they make a lot of money on software if they were to keep dropping the price like normally at this point we would be due for a price drop we're like half we're about to be halfway into the generation and normally we'd see like a 50 dollar price cut a hundred dollar price cut but it's like no we're not doing that shit so that means that the pro version if it is as powerful as people say there's no way, unless they are literally eating the cost of this and they know it's just for the enthusiast, no way this can be less than 600 Because PSVR 2 was like, what, 550 PSVR 2 was 550 almost $600 if you do a bundle. So, <laughs> no way. Yeah, but how many people are really going to be using a folding phone for just reading or emulators it's cool if you have specific reasons but for most people out there I'm, i assume they'll just read like you know <laughs> next nintendo eShop will be going to be as slow as psn on the ps3 in the year 2028 yo quicksand eShop. that's my favorite game that's my favorite game on the network guys just walking and wading through the quicksand of the eShop as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Oh, I saw Dune 2 and IMAX, and man, it was the most incredible theater experience I've ever had. I keep telling y'all. I keep telling y'all to be seated for peak. Y'all gonna learn today. Y'all gonna learn today. But it's gonna be exciting. Next year's gonna be exciting, man. I'm 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 ready for a new switch. I really am. Even though, like, I'd have this Switch, and it's probably just going to be for exclusives. Exclusives and physical Japanese games. A lot of people are really talking about that Switch 2 having two screens, foldable screen. I don't... I don't know, man. I don't know, bro. I just... I don't think, like, we're there yet. For a console to have a... a the screen itself being foldable like no crazy hinge like we used to have in the day 
I'm ex- I'm ready for whatever Nintendo is coming, just not expecting anything to avoid disappointment. I'm I'm expecting it to be a Nintendo thing. We're 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 gonna complain about it in the beginning. We're gonna say why the fuck doesn't it do this or that? But then the games are gonna come out and we're gonna buy it and it's gonna be like okay, you know, <laughs> like it just like it's one of those things where I just stopped. Because you guys know, after a while, I just stopped complaining about Nintendo because it just doesn't change anything. It really doesn't, bro. It's one of those things where e- you're either going to buy the stuff or just shut up. Like, I'm sorry. Nintendo is not that company to listen. They don't care because we are will forever be the minority. And if there's one thing that taught me that, it's Pokemon. Do not try to argue with Pokemon fans. Do not argue with Pokemon fans because they one second they hate the franchise. And the very next day, they pre-order the double pack and the DLC on top of that. And then they hate it again. And I'm like, all right, you guys. All right, you guys. <laughs> I just want a VR doc and every first person game to have a VR version and a pancake version. You really you really want to get up close and personal to Princess Peach's playroom party, right? I see how it is. I see how it is, Don Otaku. How was that Princess Peach game, by the way, Don? How would you how would you rate the story on that? Is it good? Does it live up to your expectations? What are they going to call the new Switch? Are they going to change the name? Are they going to do something stupid and call it like the the new Nintendo Switch? Like, I don't know, man. I feel like that Switch branding is so good. I don't know. I feel like they have to just... I don't know. I only played the demo. It was a 7 out of 10. 6 out of 10. Damn. Man just went from 7 to a 6. Ooh, we got a $5 Super Chat coming in from the homie Blue Senshi. Thank you, bro. Nintendo about to name the next console the Nintendo Super Dual Screen Switch 2 Deluxe. Featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. That'll be a launch game, Devil May Cry 5. This man, Jason, just said, I really want some of Peach's Peaches. Whoa, sir. Whoa. Relax, my guy. Relax. It's not even Thursday, and yet this dude is so thirsty. The Nintendo DS, the double switch. Oh, my God. The double switch? Jesus. The Super... I, I really fuck with the Super Nintendo Switch. The Super Switch. But I, I feel like that's so stupid. But again, that is something Nintendo would do. I just hope it's not like just the new Nintendo Switch. Or the Switch... Maybe it's just so simple as it's the Switch 2. <laughs> Where's my Switch 2? Stellar Blade demo is going to be peak. No, shout out to Stellar Yams. Yes, sir. Dual wielding Switch. Oh, I like that build. The Switch Up. Oh, God. The switch up. <laughs> We're going to switch it up. The switch up, you guys. The switch up. That sounds like a, a, a switch review site. The switch 2 is so simple. Don't be Microsoft with names. The switch 1X. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Can I get a switch 1X, please? The Twitch. Call it the Twitch. The switch Z2. This is the, the, the switch fold Z. The Switch Nintendo Entertainment System. <gasps> wow. The Switch Nintendo Entertainment System. Wow. So we have the Switch Nintendo Entertainment System. We have the um the Nintendo DS, the double switch. <laughs> is the honeymoon phase real for gaming? I see people hating Tears of the Kingdom on Twitter. Well, the thing, Black Dragon, is everybody hates everything on Twitter. Like, everybody hates everything. Everything is gonna get turned on. Everything. Sooner rather than later, you're going to see people come on here and say that it's time to admit that this game was ass. And it's like the day after the game comes out. <sighs> it just always happens. I don't understand it. Like, I can understand critiquing something. But when I see someone come out there and say this game is actually terrible and it's like, no, it's not. It can be disappointing, but it's not terrible. Like, when I see some people come out here and say shit like, oh, Spider-Man 2 is terrible. It's one of the worst games. I'm like, no, it is not. At worst, it can be disappointing, yes. But, like, when I see some people say shit like that, I'm like, all right, bro, you guys are not serious. The Super Switch Entertainment System. (laughs) I like what you did there. The Switch comes in two pieces. The Switch Top and the Switch Bottom. Hey, are you guys a Switch Top or are you guys a Switch Bottom? Mm, Think about that. We were just talking about Plant Lord. It's so funny because we were literally... The the whole reason we started this discussion was we were wondering what is that new gimmick going to be. Now, me personally, I want it to be the latter. I just want it to be a better Switch. More competent, more capable, more durable. And that's it for me. But in true Nintendo fashion, everything's got to have a gimmick for some reason. 
So now we're just wondering what is it going to be? Is it going to be VR? Is it going to be AR? Is it going to be a foldable screen? Is it going to be... I know what the gimmick's going to be. I find out what the gimmick's going to be. I know what it is, guys. I'll tell you exactly what the new Switch console's gimmick's about to be. Hear me out. Hear me out for a second. The new Switch console, whatever its name it's going to be, right? The new Switch console's gimmick that you've never had in previous generations is that you're going to be getting first-party Xbox content day and date. That's the new gimmick. Mm. Mm. Think about that for a second. Think about that. Yeah, that's right. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. The Switch 2's gimmick is that you're getting first-party Xbox content day and date. Yes, sir. We are really breaking down the, the, the fuck out of what this Switch console will be. This is crazy. There was one Def Girl mission in the MJ missions. Yeah. We, Halo on the Switch would go fucking hard as hell, dude. You told me, like, Halo Reach co-op on the Switch? You told me that wouldn't slap? Yeah, I could do it on the Steam Deck. But can I play it on the Switch? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> the canceled Halo DS game. We didn't forget. We didn't forget. No, we're going to get that. They're going to reboot it. Exclusive to the Switch. Master Chief Collection on the Switch would be crazy. It really would be. Like, that's so much portable power, bro. That's the entire lineage and legacy of Xbox in the palm of your hands on a Switch. That is insane. Shout out to Uncle Phil for that. $2 Super Chat coming in from Flame. I'll be there day one if there's backwards compatibility. Just saying. Well, why wouldn't the Switch 2 have backwards compatibility? If the Switch 2 doesn't have backwards compatibility, honestly, that is a very Nintendo thing to do. But at the same time, I don't feel like it wouldn't. I just, you know what I really want the Switch 2 to have? And again, this is something I just, I know Nintendo's going to do, unfortunately. I wish that Nintendo Switch had backwards compatibility where the games themselves could retroactively benefit from the new hardware. So they'll have like at least a stable resolution, stable frame rate. If they didn't, with a simple patch, maybe it can fix it. But knowing Nintendo, we're going to sell you Tears of the Kingdom on switch to now it's at 60 frames per second 1080p and people are still going to buy it they're going to release it again for 70 dollars it's going to happen it is now most people would just do like a free update smart delivery and all that but nintendo's like no no no. we're going to sell you the bayonetta trilogy all three games now at a stable 60 frames 1080p and i'm not going front depending on what the game is i might double dip i'm not going front Bayonetta 3, one's like ass on the Switch, bro. But if you give me that trilogy, all three games on one cart or two carts, I'll do that. Even though I own Bayonetta 2 on the cart. I'll do it. Oh, the hell you do that? Reminder that only two Nintendo consoles handhelds have ha haven't had backwards compatibility post N64. Yeah, dude. The GameCube obviously didn't because that was a new format. And the... um. The, um, obviously the N64 didn't, you know, hot take sunshine is better than 64. Boomer is over here hyping 64. Oh shit. I love sunshine. But better than 64? I don't know. Yeah. Halo split screen and portable modes. Dude, we would have land parties everywhere. We could have a land party in my room. We could have a land party in my car. We could have a land party at Dunkin' Donuts. We could have land parties at the park. We could have a land party at a funeral. We could, we could have a land party at the library, bro. We could have a land party. Dude, we could have a land party in, in, in the grocery store. We, we can, we can make all the commercials for playing Halo Reach co-op everywhere we go. We can do it. We can do, we can do it, you guys. For Sergeant Johnson. That's what he would have wanted. Bayonetta 2 looks better than some Xbox One and PS4 games. You tripping. No, Bayonetta 2 looks good, but let's 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 relax. Bayonetta 3? Yeah, exactly. Let's relax. Nah, Bayonetta 2 is sick. At a funeral. That's what Sergeant Johnson would have wanted, bro. We pay our respects, and then we pay our respects. Yo, the homie Jason is a sick individual, you guys. This man texted me saying, I want to get back to playing Final Fantasy Rebirth so bad, but I'm still in Costa de Sol. 
And I'm like, why is he still in Costa de Sol? He still wants to use the swimsuits while I'm in the region. Like, bro, what is this? I can't play one-handed. And then this man posted the photo of the PlayStation Adaptive Controller. And he's like, wait a second, is this what it's for? That man Jason is a sick individual, man. Like, what is wrong with this dude? <laughs> I thought I was horny. Just joining is Neo drunk yet? No, I'm not drunk. I'm not. No, we're not drinking this week. We are not drinking this week. But that man Jason is sick, bro. He a sick individual for that. That man said, let me get that PlayStation Adaptive Controller so I can play Rebirth one-handed. You just read that? Yo. Man, listen. You, you, texted, you texted that shit earlier today when I was, like, finishing up at work and I was getting ready to go to the gym. And I see this, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yo, wait till he sees Stellar Blade. He won't get past the demo. Oh, absolutely. He will not. Jason won't, bro. That man Jason's gonna look like Randy Marsh from that episode of South Park, overlogging. Yo, Blue Senshi says, no, he's going to be drunk, though. Rest assured. No, I'm not. I'm not touching this bottle, bro. We good. Costa de Soul black chick got the abs like Tifa. Hey, shout out to Costa. Yo, shout out to the women in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, bro. So diverse, bro. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has got a lot of Negroes. I will say that. And good looking Negroes, too. Negroes with diverse hairstyles. Good hairstyles. It's crazy because Square Enix, Square Enix in 2023, they went from Yoshi P not believing black people existed to Rebirth having a ton of black people with good hairstyles that don't just look like anime Sasuke. Shout out to Square Enix. What's the worst scenario for a new Nintendo console? Um, Worst scenario is they... Worst scenario is if they just somehow... Worst scenario is just doing another set-top box. Even though a lot of people would want that, it's just not for them. No, the fact that they can differentiate is what really helped them with the Switch. And now with handhelds booming? Oh, absolutely. It would be foolish to go back to just that. Thundercats open world game. I'd buy it. I'd take a Thundercats beat em up game, to be honest. Prime 4 in 2024. Dude. I Okay, but here's... Okay, here's the cynic in me. Does anyone else get the feeling that, like, we're not going to get Prime 4 until they re-release Metroid Prime 2 and 3 remastered? I, and that's what scares me, because they haven't announced Prime 2 remastered yet. So... That leads me to believe that they, this thing might not be out until next year, dude. Unless they just say Prime 2 and 3 are coming out within like three months of each other and Prime 4 for the... But I feel like Prime 4 might be that Switch 2 Breath of the Wild game where it's cross-gen. Dude, what is taking so fucking long? Bro, it's been five years. What is Retro doing, bro? It's been five fucking years. And you're telling me we can't see anything about this Switch game? What the fuck is going on with this, man? How? how? I don't get it. I really don't get it. I still want GameCube too. Yeah. I want... Uh, bring back the handles. Bring back the handles on the game consoles. Wolverine, nah, Wolverine's gonna be, I wanna say, probably 2026. Just with the leaks and everything, what happened, it's 2026. <laughs> There's a 10 hour version of John Wick falling down the stairs. I believe it. Oh my god. The Wii rumors it was going to be a triangle GameCube called TriCube. Oh, God. That is crazy. That sounds like something you would see in like a like a like a 2000s comedy movie. Like, like, you know how Jake and Josh had um the Game Sphere console? That, you know? Yeah. Game Sphere. Game Sphere. Beyond the Spider-Verse was supposed to come out this weekend. Yo. Dude. Even before the strikes happened and everything, the fact that we heard that Spider-Verse um, 
across Spider-Verse, literally, they finished it. They were still working on that shit up until the last minute. I was very shocked. I was like, oh, no, this is not. That means the sequel ain't coming out any soon. Anytime soon. It's spherical. Spherical. Do you have a game that you want remade besides Final Fantasy IX? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Dino Crisis. That's next on my list. Dino Crisis, Final Fantasy VI, Chrono Trigger. Uh... I I mean, for a lot of games, I could go for, like, a new installment. Like, I could go for a new Tenchu, you know, a new Animusha. Do I need remakes of the old ones? I don't know, but I can go for a new one, too. Dino Crisis, I can go for a new one or a remake because it's so old, you know. Final Fantasy VI and Nine and Chrono Trigger, yeah, you can remake that. Legend of Dragoon is the only PS1 game that needs a remake. Nah, there's, there's definitely a lot of PS1 games that could get a remake. And them controls, my brother. Need for Speed Underground 2 remake. Yeah, why not, bro? Just, you know what we need? We need another Most Wanted remake. How many times is it going to do that? But we already have a new Dino Crisis game. What game is it, Flame? What game is it? Is it the game you dropped? <laughs> this is going to be 100 Frights. Yo, was that the game on the PS2 and the GameCube and the Xbox? I think I remember that. Ugh, don't 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 mention the game that starts with an E and it ends with an L in this chat tonight. Don't do it. Metal Gear Solid One remake, another one. Yeah, it's it's time, bro. But will it be boneless or will it have soul? Because that's the difference. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there, Jason. I see what you did there. Remake Redfall. A new tour game would slap. Dude, after playing Persona 4, Persona 3 Reload, I, I remember how I was like, we don't need a Persona 4 remake? Now playing Reload, I'm like, we need it. We need it. Streets need it, bro. If it looks that good, yes. Um, Least favorite region. Ah, uh, anything with the map irritating me on. Okay. So here's the thing. Honestly, none of the regions have really bothered me yet. I mean, aspects of Cosmo Canyon a little bit, but none of them have really bothered me because I've just been mainlining the story. I feel like if I went crazy with the side content, I think some aspects could annoy me. I could see Gongaga being fucking irritating. Because I was just looking at the way that that map is leveled and layered. And I was like, oh no. Let me not hit the mic. I was like, oh no. So I just did the main story. But I... Yeah, Flappy Bird remake, yeah. <laughs> the, the unseen story. Um, But I nothing is annoying me as of yet. Which is weird to say because I'm, I'm like more than halfway done with the game. But Gungaga, I just, I looked at that design. I was like, uh-uh. Cos like I said, Cosmo Canyon is starting to get on my nerves. But it's not to the point where I just want to, like, throw everything out. And I think that might be because I'm already in this mindset, Corey, where it just, it makes no sense. Just want to throw out the game. You're not going to finish it. So just wait till you finish the game, then just complain about everything. <laughs> Me? Come on, Gaga? <sighs> Bro, Red 13 is beating my ass at Queen's Blood. Hey, man. Listen. Gotta get good, my friend. Sounds like a skill issue. Sounds like a skill issue, my G. Guitar Hero Remake? I could see it. Same, brother. Persona 3 Reload got me on a merciless challenge run right now. Well over 150 hours. Damn. Shout out to you, brother. <laughs> Everything needs a remake. You know, hey, honestly, you know what, what game needs a remake? The Last of Us Part 1. I just, I, I tried playing that on PS5 recently. It hasn't aged well. I think we need another one. We need a PS5 Pro remake. Sounds like you got shit cards. Yeah, the thing about um Queen's Blood, make sure you're buying the cards at like every place you go just to assemble a deck and then create a good deck. And if you have a good deck, you got good dick. If you don't have a good deck, you just don't know how to use it. Why didn't you like season two of Euphoria? 
Season 2 of Euphoria was just a little all over the place for me. I mean, it was fun in the toxic sense. Like, oh, you know, like, oh, look, they beat that bitch and everything. But I was like, okay, bro. It doesn't feel as focused as the first season did. We got the PS5 remake of The Last of Us, though. No, 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 no. We need a PS5 Pro remake of The Last of Us. Think about that. Oh, God. We don't talk about the cat. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel said the Rose needs a remake. You know what needs a remake? Yu-Gi-Oh! Where, where are my DS Yu-Gi-Oh! games? Where the fuck did they go? They were around here. Yu-Gi-Oh! You know what needs a remake? Yu-Gi-Oh! Tag Team Hero Duel or whatever on the PSP. Tag Force. That needs a remake. <laughs> Everything needs a fucking remake. <laughs> the cat. The cat. Yo, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. That game slapped, bro. You guys remember that. I know you remember that. Jack and Daxter needs remakes. Nah. She, uh, part, yeah, a lot of Jack 2, yeah. <laughs> that one fucking... Jack 2 needs a remake specifically because of those fucking save points. Those fucking checkpoints of that game were agonizing. Oh my god. I remember, like, there were some of these levels in Jack 2 you'd be playing, and you might die on some bullshit, and then it starts you back at the beginning. I was like, what the fuck? Yo. That dig site mission? I, You know, I never really played much of Conquest, though. I had meaning to play I had mean to play it, and I just didn't. I played, like, a little bit of it, and I was like, eh. I still need them to re-remake Last of Us Part 1 on PC. Oh, they absolutely do. But are you telling me that Ellie wasn't iconic? That Ellie on this horse who was like... Ugh. That game isn't going to beat that. That game isn't going to be that hard without the checkpoints for... Yeah, honestly, Marcus, the biggest problem with Jack 2 were those checkpoints. They were so fucking annoying. Jesus. Star Fox Adventures remake. The last of these goddamn re-releases. Bro, I need to get back on Pokemon Conquest on my handheld. They need to remake that. Maybe they might put that shit on the Switch too. Let's get it. We need a Persona 2 remake. Well, Persona started with 3, so I don't know what this 2 is. Now, but that is my dream. If we got a From the Ground Up Persona 2 remake, I just don't trust Modern Atlas. No, you don't need a hard mode in Pokemon. You see, well, the, I'll give you a hard mode. A hard mode in Pokemon is just being a Pokemon fan. That's the hard mode. <laughs> That's the hard mode. Your whole existence being a Pokemon fan is hard mode. Because you, everything you think every time this might be the one, this might be the one, and then it's like fuck. General warts. <laughs> it's like genital warts at this game. Herpes the next. Uh, gonorrhea for this one. <laughs> like it's just that's how it is. Be a Pokemon fan. <laughs> no, you <laughs> listen. There are three constants in life. Death, taxes, and a remake of so uh, Star Fox 64. Like you're, That's all you're going to get. That's all you guys are going to get. Just just be happy about it. There, No. That's why. Nintendo doesn't know what to do. It's like, either remake Star Fox 64 or nothing. Like They, they can't literally do anything but that. Like I Just accept it. You guys are ungrateful. Another Star Fox 64 remake. Exactly. It's either another Star Fox 64 remake or no Star Fox. Come on, you guys are so ungrateful here. Come on now. <laughs> Reboot Beyblade. Let's get it. Neo, no joke. There were like three different Pokemon areas at PAX. I was scared of this giant Pikachu taking pictures. Why didn't you go hug it? Why, you got a problem with rodents? What's wrong, bro? It's not very, It's not very opening and accepting. I thought you were an Xbox guy. When everybody plays, we all win. So why didn't you go play with that rat? Why? Is it because because Diva will smell the rat on you? And she'll be like, you rat, I knew it. That's why Diva was spazzing with her face looking like she was in two different dimensions. She couldn't believe what she saw. I didn't want to die. You got a pro Oh, so you got a problem with the yellow rats. Okay, I see how it is, Flame. Flame, you've been moving kind of weird recently. Not going front. 
Talk about like you going up to Boston, you hanging out with these people called the Iron Lords. Like, what is what is going on here, bro? Talk about Warframe for this for the Duvaki. I'm like, what 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 are these battle chance flames? You are looking kind of different, bro. <laughs> Talk about I'm about to reload this. I'm like, reload what flame? What what are we doing here? What are we doing here, Flame? <laughs> we need another Ninja Gaiden. Uh, we, yeah, we are due for one. The last one was like, what, 10, 11 years ago? We got that, uh, the remaster collection that I don't think did anything. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> no, that's actually, the, that's the most of it, Flame. That's the most of it. I, I, I literally expanded all my jokes right then and there. <laughs> Open world Bayonetta. Oh, please, no. We we need less open world games. There are some rumors people saying that the next Resident Evil game might be open world. Oh. I just, I'm tired. I'm so tired, you guys. I'm just so tired, guys. Why? Why does a Resident Evil game need to be open world? Like, it can be open-ended, sure. But not open world, please. We, Dude. That Devil May Cry 6, I feel like, is starting production now. Because Itsuno is working on this. He's going to take his ass back to Devil May Cry after this. So, fingers crossed we get that shit by the... It's going to be like Devil May Cry 5. We're going to get it at the end of the generation, and we're just going to love it. <laughs> it's going to come out like 2027, 2028, and we would be good. Why are we doubting Capcom now? Man, listen, I just don't want no open world Resident Evil, bro. I don't need that in my life. That we do need a new Deadpool game. That is what we need. I don't know, like an open world horror game. Like I know people are bringing up, like, oh well, like Evil Within Two was bigger. Like you could make it like that, but I'm like, no. I don't know. Like, well, what are we gonna get from it being open world? Like, oh, there's a jump scare there. Now there's a jump scare six miles away. <laughs> I'm good, chief. I'm good, fam. Well, Resident Evil 8 was bigger, but it wasn't really open world. Kind of like a hub world, in a sense. Code Veronica remake. Well, have you heard of Resident Evil 1 coming back again? Listen, I'm, I'm tired of y'all being ungrateful, bro. You're going to take your Star Fox 64 remake. You're going to take your Resident Evil 1 remake. And you guys are going to like it. I just want Resident Evil 5 remake with more racism. Honestly, they need to dial up the racism in Resident Evil 5 remake. Because if not, what are we doing? What are we doing here? <laughs> oh, yeah. IGN said that the, like Resident Evil 5 is too controversial to be remade. I'm like, why? Because you're killing black people. I'm like, oh, God. Okay. 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 So why wasn't 4 controversial? Okay. It's like, just let the market decide whether or not they want to buy a Resident Evil 5. Just let the market decide, bro. <laughs> if Resident Evil 5 was really that racist of a game, why would they keep re-releasing it? And why would people keep buying it? Like, I, I just... I'm hearing all the wrong things from the wrong people. Have we had a game that's been remade twice? Um... Remade twice, like full from the ground up. Remade. If they do Metal Gear Solid One again, yeah, that'd be it. Um, like <laughs> Last of Us. Well, the, Last of Us was a remaster, then it was a remake. <laughs> no racism. Resident Evil Five is like no cheese in my hamburger. Do you guys know there are people who eat hamburgers with no cheese? That's weird to me. You're just eating a bun with meat and sauce. Honestly, I feel like if you eat hamburgers with no cheese, you might be gay. So there's no problem if you're gay, but I'm just saying, like, you just eat a, you just eat meat with sauce on it. You just, it's pretty gay, bro. I'm just saying. Like, why would you do that? Why would why would you just eat? meat with bread 
and sauce. Where's the cheese? Neo hates lactose people. Only, only for like this specific situation. Yes, fucking freaks. I'll say they are freaks. Like, like you just go out with someone. Can I just get a hamburger? That's strange to me. That's very strange to me. Damn, bro, you just out of yourself. Not me. <laughs> Not me, bro. Not me. Them. You get mad at me. They get mad at me for no reason. Want to hear a hot or cold take, Neo? Return to Jafar is better than Iron Man 2. Here you go. Well, that's not really a hot take. Return to Jafar is a better movie than Iron Man 2. Neo, can I get a mac and cheese without the cheese? You just eating mac? Oh, that's definitely kind of gay. You like eating a dude named Mac? You sick. You got some sick individuals in the chat tonight. Yeah, the cops will show up. The FBI, open up. Nah, but honestly, like, if I'm ever out with someone, they just get a hamburger. I'll be like, they might know where the bodies are hidden. I'm just saying. I like eating without the cheese, but lettuce, tomato, onions, ketchup. So you're very zesty, plant lord. You're a very zesty person. Very zesty. But damn, that's still meat and bread. I don't, I don't know, guys. This just might be like that weird thing for me. You know how everyone has like that weird thing? Like, here's another thing. If I see somebody just like drinking a cup of milk... They might be a serial killer. I have a feeling. Just a cup of milk. Not milk in cereal. Not milk in a milkshake. But just a cup of milk. Like, why are you doing that? It's not chocolate milk. It's not strawberry milk. It's just a cup of milk. Talking about you just drinking some milk. You got a milk mustache. Like, I don't know. That's, that's different to me, bro. <laughs> hey, Blaze. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? BG drinks warm milk. Wait, what? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't tell me, BG. Don't tell me, BG. BG drink milk? If I drink milk, I have to have a cookie or a dessert with it. Fair. I swear. BG just drinking milk. Oh, no, that's weird to me, bro. But I don't know. That boy BG is an interesting individual when you think about it. You know what I'm saying? B. That's some shit I would see somebody like, 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 a. Uh, Alex doing or or maybe maybe Jack move or maybe Bond he'll he'll drink some milk with his pinky up saying like clowns of course I drink milk clowns I play baseball all my life clowns that's why I got nice hair because I drink my milk clowns like yeah I could see Bond doing that but I'm just saying man that's that, that, that BG is cool BG is cool right there but like all right okay so cereal before milk or milk before cereal is 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 bowl cereal and then milk but some people in this chat will probably do milk bowl and then cereal or milk cereal then bowl i cuz i like putting in the cereal cuz then i have a good idea and i can gauge how much milk i have to put in and i always put a little bit less milk cuz more often than not it's way more milk than you need i'm cooling yeah, how are you, Blaze? How's your week been, man? How you doing, bro? Cereal before milk always. Yep, Costco pizza. Yeah, I love Costco pizza. I fuck with that. It's common sense. But the one thing in life I've learned, Donald Taco, is that common sense ain't so common, bro. That's a bar for me. If you do the milk first, it will get soggy. Yeah. Milk inside the cereal box without the bowl. <laughs> That man is a savage. That's a that's a real adult move right there. When you just don't care, you just you just open up the box and then you just pour the fucking milk. But then now you have to finish it because you can't put that shit. You can't put the milk back because you if you pour it in the box with oh god, bro. When you off Saturday, not for a while, man. Um, I'm trying to think. The next Saturday I'm off. Duh, fuck. Yes, at least not going to be for another month or so, Blaze. I'd have to, like, take off on a Saturday for whatever and then be good. Because they usually I have my availability open Saturday nights, so they always schedule me Saturday nights. But if there's ever a Saturday where, like, let's say, for example, if I just don't need to be there, you'll be the first to know. I'll be a late addition to the to the freaking solid cast. I'll be like, I'll text you. I'll be like, Blaze, I'm good to go for tonight. But you will know. You'll be the first person, my man. 
toothpaste and then cereal. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough, Jason. You're on one tonight, bro. First, you're using that PlayStation Adaptive Controller, and now this. All right, Jason. Some, something's up with you, my friend. <laughs> I don't drink the cereal flavor milk. I know people who don't do that and just throw it away. Y'all ain't drinking the milk after the cereal, but it tastes so good. Like, bro, if you have Reese's Puffs or, like, Fruity Loops and you finish eating the cereal, the, the milk itself is still flavored. It tastes good. I remember yogurt with cereal. Yeah. Orange juice inside this. All right, y'all some deviants tonight. Cap'n Crunch is better than ca Crunch Berries. Now, the best cereal is a tie between Cinnamon Toast Crunch or Reese's Puffs. Those are top tier. And then everything else is up for debate. I've been drinking almond milk, though. I fucks with almond milk and oat milk. Who drank more alcoholic beverages in their prime? Neo or Black Bond? Eh, definitely Black Bond. See how many white girls he'd be hanging out with? Uh. Bond is like the first person I've ever met in life who was like excited to be in a pool with another man. And there's nothing against, nothing wrong with that hanging out with your boys, but I've never seen a man so excited. Like that man went to Florida. And the only thing he showed us was him in a pool with other men. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm out with my boys, like we out, like we had a bar, we had a convention, we doing something, but like this man Bond was in a pool with other men. I don't. That man Bond is different. Maybe I'm not at that age yet. I don't know. Tequila and cereal. Oh, you having one of those mornings? Has anyone ever tried a beer ice cream float? No, I haven't though. I have not, and I want to. I'm tired of this Reese's Puffs glazing. No, it's not glazing, bro. It's fact. You just don't like the peanut butter chocolate flavor, bro. You know, Donald Taco didn't like it because there was a black man advertising growing it up. That Donald Taco was just like, "Where's my white baker?" Literally, because he saw the Simmons Toast Crunch commercials. But he saw a black man on there. He saw a Negro rapping. He's just like, ugh. Too uppity. Almond milk is just nut. It is. It really is. Well, when you think about it, the first person... Guys, when you think about it, the first person to, like, ever, you know, give us milk was a very horny individual, when you think about it. Because he, like, went up to a cow and he just, like, looked at its titties. It's very strange. If there's no white man on my cereal, I don't want it. Wow. <laughs> Bottom tier sugary cereal. Honey Smacks, Golden Crisps, Oreos, Apple Jacks. I remember I loved the Oreo cereal as a kid, and then I tried it as an adult, and I thought that it was just okay. And then I, 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 I found a life hack to more diabetes. It's to get actual Oreos, crumple them up, put it in a cereal, and just eat it as fast as you can before the Oreos get soggy. That was my solution for the lack of the Oreo cereal until I found them again. You know what's one cereal that I don't really fuck with? Um, Lucky Charms, because it's just... Y'all eat it for the marshmallows, let's be real. Um, Lucky Charms I don't fuck with. And then a lot, like a, a lot of the weird ones that Donataku just said, you know? I don't fuck with Lucky Charms. Kix is okay. Regular Cheerios is psychotic. Um... The uh, raisin brand, y'all niggas just eat it for the raisins. Uh, rice Krispies, their treats are better than the Rice Krispie cereal. Cocoa Krispies are good. Cocoa Pebbles are good too. Golden Grams is nice. Ew, ban Neo, ban me for what? No, I said most of what he said. Read ninety four. Apple Jacks is good. I had French Toast Crunch. Nah, you know, you know what you guys need to be careful of? Be careful of these cereals that look too good to be true. Be careful of the cereals that are these collabs and shit. Like, I remember I had Cold Stone ice cream cereal. Most disappointing cereal, man. I thought it'd be something it wasn't. And it wasn't, bro. It said it was a birthday cake flavor. I felt like Dewey. I felt like Dewey from Malcolm in the Middle. Oh, $10 super check coming in from the homie Artsy Avanti. Are there any games you've always wanted to play but always procrastinated in getting? In my case, it was the last story for the Nintendo Wii and Magna Carta 2 on the Xbox 360. Um, So, procrastination in the sense that it took me a while to play them and then I finally played them and it was like peak? Is that what you mean? Or just games that are on your list to get and you just never got for whatever reason? Oh, uh, well... 
most of the time I will buy a game if I'm excited for it. And if I just don't get to it for, <laughs> if it takes me a while to complete it for a few years, you know, like for Sun of Five Royal. But in my defense, I did start three different playthroughs of that game. So hypothetically speaking, it's not as bad. Um, If I had to pick one, dude. Well, I mean, I bought this. Well, I guess that's partially. I I want to say Octopath Traveler 2 because this game did come out last year. I bought it because it was buy one, get one free sale at GameStop. And I've only put like 10 hours into it. So I'm kind of procrastinating this one here. If I'm talking recent games. Um, I mean, because it's kind of hard to say I'm procrastinating stuff when there's just so much to play that I don't really focus on things that aren't in like my forefront. You know what I'm saying? Because if if because there's no way we're gonna be play be able to play every single game. You just have to focus on the ones that we want. Speaking of you, Artsy Avanti, we were just talking about you like an hour ago. We were talking about um because uh, people here were saying like yeah I want to start up Kakarot and I was like yeah Avanti donated for us to play it like four years ago and we played it and then Avanti was just like I'm bored can we do something else? Because <laughs> we were like ah oh, this, this is definitely an anime game. Yeah, bro. It was like an ice. It was, you know, it was like a birthday cake, Cold Stone ice cream flavored cereal. It was too good to be true, my friend. Man, my girlfriend used to call them. Wait for it. She used to call them Golden Grahams. Golden Grahams. She she enunciated the shit out of that, bro. Like, you know, how you're trying to reach the word count on an essay. She was trying to reach like the word count on a YouTube video. Golden Grahams. I remember Doug. Speaking of which, my girlfriend, she got a copy of Magna Carta 2 as well. That's oddly specific. Hey, you gotta, yeah, go ahead and finish that Mass Effect so you can get to that Mass Effect 2 greatness. Magna Carta was good. Sounds like you trying to pronounce Naruto names. Grahams, yeah. Naruto Shippuden. Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura... Yeah, those are my that's my jams. This the Oreo stuff was gross, bro. What the Oreo cereal? Yeah, people didn't fuck with it. I just had pro you know what it is? It's not that I had problem pronouncing stuff growing up. I was just around people that just really didn't know how to pronounce shit. So I just thought it was legit. Like I told you my cousin and how you pronounce stuff from Zelda. You know, like first thing, Ocarina. Okay, that's fine. Because some people said Ocarina, some people said Ocarina. Okay, he he pronounced the 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 Deku tree is the Duku tree, and I was like, I see an E in there, but it's the Duku tree. All right, you know, because you didn't have any real spoken dialogue in that game. So he said the Duku tree. I was like, okay, sure. And then he said like Hyrule was pronounced He Rule. Maybe my cousin had some issues. Maybe my cousin had some issues, bro. It could have been that. He he got some things right, like Epona. You know what I'm saying? Unless like, we've been saying that wrong this whole time. And then he said, like, Kakariko. I feel like that's right. Yeah. What else did he say? Uh, uh, no, I think everything else is fine. <laughs> Your cousin might be artistic. Did he fail English? No, he did. he's fine. He did fine. But it was just like that game in particular. <laughs> it was just that game in particular, bro. <laughs> Man said he's acoustic. <laughs> acoustic, artistic. Bro was just saying shit. I mean, yeah. And I thought it was that's how it was. And then I remember I had this conversation with my sister. I, I want to say it was like 10, 11, 12 years ago. I was like, you know, I don't think this is how we pronounce this stuff. And then she had this moment of silence. She was just like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, certain things, it's up for interpretation, depending, you know, like people like, for example, um, Naruto, Mad Madara. People pronounce it Madara. Some people pronounce it Madara. 
um, Hidan and Kakuzu. Hidan, people did Hidan. You know? Uh, people said, Ma so people pronounce Madara Madera. Madera. Yeah, like I said, bro, it's, it's you know, I used to call Vegeta Mojita. Damn. That man just did a whole different letter. I respect it. English is a fun language. It absolutely is. Do you remember the Kellogg special PC demo for this? Oh, you just unlocked a core memory, dude. Holy shit, NKDN. All I got to say is, Neo, you have to try Pringles Buffalo flavor. Mmm, really? I, guys, I was tempted to buy Pringles yesterday. But I, I looked at the price of Pringles. For a regular can, not the Super Stack. A regular can of Pringles was like $3. I remember there was a time where Pringles used to be a buck fifty for a big can. And now it's $3. Joe Biden, what are you going to do to address the inflation towards sour cream and onion Pringles? That's what I need to know before I hit the polls. Naruto Shippuden. People pronounce Shippuden. It was Shippuden or Shippuden. People would always go back between Naruto Shippuden and Shippuden. It's $6 for a big can in the Bronx. Jesus Christ. For a big, bot, for a big uh, can of Pringles over here, it's like almost $5. It's terrible, guys. I refuse to call. So, you know what the funny thing is? I've always called him Arceus. I've always called him Arceus. And then people said, no, his name is Arceus. And I'm like... Okay. My classmates in high school pronounce Inuyasha as in, in, Inuwasha. Wow, the W with the Y. Maybe we were all dyslexic growing up. Maybe that's what it was. Oh, you bought Pringles yesterday. What flavor, Jason? It better be sour cream and onion. God's chosen flavor. What's the most wrong way you've heard someone pronounce an anime or anime character's name? Um, my, well, not to not to do too much talking, but one of my best friends. I love this dude to death. He's like my little brother, but he's not so little anymore because he's almost 30. Um, you might know him. Crazy Black Man 108. That's my guy. Ah, oh, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it to him. I was going to pull up the video. I was going to pull up the video of how he pronounced some of these Naruto character names. Y'all wouldn't believe it. The OGs remember. Oh, barbecue and sour cream? Okay, Jason. You're, you're back. You're, you're good. Jason, we're so back. <laughs> Um, but shout out to my boy, Adam. Um, <laughs> there was a video he made where he was, mind you, he was really excited because they were localizing, um, Naruto Ultimate Ninja 6 that was on the PSP. Well, well, Ultimate Ninja 6 XL3. And they brought it over. I think it's Naruto Ultimate Ninja Heroes 3. And there was uh, one of the members on, I think, Sasuke's team. And I forgot how he, he the way he pronounced, what was the shark dude on Sasuke's team? What was his name? Starts with an S. Shark dude on Sasuke's team. The guy who had like the fap arm. Okay, thank you, Lazy Otaku. You're not so lazy. Suigetsu. Suigetsu, right? So we can all agree his name is Suigetsu, right, you guys? Suigetsu. Suigetsu. You guys know Suigetsu. Um, my boy, Crazy Blackman108. Shout out. Love this dude to death. That man pronounced uh, Suigetsu. I, I don't know how. I know he was excited because the game got announced or whatever. Hold on. He pronounced it as Suigetsu is the name. He pronounced it as Setsujin. Setsujin. How he got one from the other? 
I don't know. I don't know. Yo no se. Man said Setsu Jean. Like Set Su Jean. From Sui Get Su. So he got a Su. He got a Su. But I don't know where the rest came from. Um, so that would definitely be the most wild way I heard somebody pronounce it. <laughs> Steve's thinking of Setsu Bean. <laughs> oh, God. Neo has receipts of us. No, I just remember things, you know, because I, I also remember when I would just mispronounce some shit. Like, I had this for the longest time, and you guys will notice it if you watched a lot of my old videos. I, okay. Um, perfect. I have a visual aid. All right. So you, you guys, you guys know, like during the PS3 era, PS4 era, we had a lot of these um, HD collections. Now, your boy Neo, when you say things oh so many times, you get really bored. And you want to mix it up. You want to just say different things. So if I had something like the Sly Cooper collection or I had something like the Ratchet and Clank collection or I had something like the Kingdom Hearts 1.0 HD Remix Collection, what would I say to describe them outside of saying collection or a group of games? I would say something like what normal people would say, compilation. It's a compilation of PS2 games, remastered on the PS3. Now your boy Neo, again, hooked on phonics, your boy Neo was saying, Compliation. <laughs> I was saying compliation. And nobody bothered to correct me for so many years. They were just like, oh, I know what he meant to say. But I've been saying that for the longest time. I, I goes before the L, Neo. Not before, not the other way around. So I was saying compliation. And then my boy Tundex, he, he, he pulled me aside one day. He was just like, why do you keep saying this? And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, this right here. Oh, yeah, compilation. Chris, it's spelled compilation. Then I was just like, oh, shit, you're right. And then after I after I saw that, I was like, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> Except when I fuck with Jamal. And I'm just like, hey, man, it's my favorite compilation. <laughs> like I said, everybody gets one. Yo, shout out to the Ex Ezio collection on the uh, Xbox. That shit runs at uh, 60 frames per second. Beautiful, bro. It's beautiful, man. Great, great games, bro. I started playing Assassin's Creed 2. This shit is a gem. Sorry. <sighs> Damn, we, we really had a whole freaking... Yo. <laughs> the compilation of Final Fantasy... Oh my god, I did say that. I did say that. Holy shit. God. God. When we finally have that stream where we just watch a lot of old videos, we gotta count how many times I would say certain things. I'm like, yep. Yep. Who has the better compilation sonic mario or mega man what do you mean by that like who has the better like collections they've done well the mario ones you can't buy anymore <laughs> i would say technically the mega man ones since those are the ones that are like readily available you were still green it's fine yeah but was i the big green dub of auntie oh big green you better let that child alone <laughs> and i did not misspeak that's what they actually said you better let that child alone oh man Fucking memories right there. Golly, guys. I'm looking at the clock right now, and it's 10.40. I, I know I said this was going to be a 90-minute stream, and here we are. It's been almost three freaking hours. How do we keep doing this? I have no idea. 
started with us talking about Sonic, then an Xbox handheld, and then how to pronounce things. I used to mispronounce platinum and called it platinum. That's no, I mean that's not too far off. Platinum, platinum. It sounds like you're saying like Palutena's army or something. Um, but before we go, hold on one second. I'm missing my essential tools. Okay, but before we go, we have to have ourselves a hydration check, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what is a hydration check, you might ask? Well, a hydration check is my way of making sure you guys are accountable and drinking all of your water because it's very important and we do not drink enough water throughout the day, especially to offset all the alcohol that we have been drinking. But we haven't had any alcohol tonight. So, yes, that is that is good for a change. We did an Ask Neo stream this week with no alcohol. We're good. You know, it's so funny because a lot of people are probably going to look at this and be like, Thanks every single stream. And it's like, no, I don't. I don't. It's just like we happen to have fun sometimes. But um, yeah, we're going to have ourselves a hydration check. And then after that, we're just going to relax, maybe play a little bit of Rebirth, and then call it a night, my friends. Uh, so on the count of three, you guys, the compilation of Neo Game Spark. Jesus. Uh, Don says, I just finished my water bottle. I believe you, Don. I believe you. So you're good, my friend. Um, and I didn't even drink any water throughout the course of the stream, if you guys can believe that. That's a new record for me. That's a new record. But uh, yeah, on the count of three, one, two, three, and that's time. Finish the rest of that. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling hydrated. I'm feeling rejuvenated. I caught Persona 3 Reload for 40. I'm playing it after Rebirth. My man, that's the, that's the real art of the deal right there. Yes, sir, Plant Dord. Water emojis all up in that. Um... Poland Spring and Deer Park are the only good water brands. Don't believe these cappers. Well, Poland Spring, yes. I will agree. Poland Spring is top tier water. Um, for seltzer, I fuck with Schweppes. Schweppes is my favorite seltzer alongside um, Vintage. Those two. I don't really mess with anything else. Polar is okay. Um, freaking the... What's that other brand I drank? Polar. There's another brand I wasn't crazy about. Polar. Is it Canada Dry? I don't know. But, uh, nah, definitely Poland Spring. Poland Spring. Bro loves that static. I do. I do. I do, you guys. TV static water is just the best for me. But, um,. Yeah, you guys, um, again, thank you for coming through to another Ask Neo. Uh, happy to be doing these on a weekly basis again. Uh, we will be, says the man with a bottle in his room, readily available. I do, but you know what? The true character and testament of a man is to have a bottle of liquor near him at all times and not be tempted by it. I'm doing pretty good. I mean, I had an edible last night, so that's probably why I'm not in the mood to drink because I'm just like, I already did one thing. And that edible... Shit, man, that edible. Because I, I hadn't done an edible in almost a year. It was a sativa. It was a sativa edible, and that thing. I was chilling. After like an hour, I was doing pretty good, and then that shit just fucking went into overdrive in like hour two and hour three. Man, I was on my ass, bro. I was chilling, dude. Joey Phoenix, I'm back. <laughs> yes, sir. Um. No, I don't fuck with Fiji water. I don't do Fiji water. I don't do Dasani. I do Essentia. I love Essentia water. Essentia is really good. You ain't being Irish tonight, Neo. If you want good fortune, take a shot. You'll live till 105. Can I just... Can I just smoke for a change? Can't we do that instead? Yeah, Dasani is a hell no. That shit is... That shit is like... The best way I could describe Dasani, it's like... I saw an internet meme and it said... Dasani is like drinking... Backwash water. That's what it tastes like. It's nasty. When you think about that, you're going to be like, ew, nasty. It is nasty, bros. It is nasty, my friends. It was terrible. I, I worked at a job, and the job was sponsored by Dasani. And so all they had in the break room was Dasani, and it was horrifying. Remember, I used to bring my own water from home. Hey, Eric Williams, what's up, bro? Ain't got you live in a minute. Yeah, unfortunately, you caught me at the tail end, my brother. Unfortunately, my mans. We're about to wrap it up here. 
No, our job, it was, it was a big company. They made a lot of money. But at the same time, it was just one of those things where it's like, yeah, we make a lot of money. So we're going to work with like the biggest companies. And it's just, ugh. Your boy be couch lock. Let's smoke trees. Early smoke. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, man. I was uh that indica. Because I'm the type of person, guys, whenever I get high and I smoke, I, I'm not the person to function. I will literally smoke and I got maybe 90 minutes in me to do stuff before I just get locked. That's it, guys. Like, I literally will get high and I will just sit, watch TV, eat, play games. You ask me to do anything else, I'm like, nope. And then I just pass out. That man, Cutter Freeman, says Dasani is goaded. Oh, man. Now we know why you got 17 kids. I'm doing good, Eric Williams. Thank you, man. Hopefully you're doing well, too. Neo's a rocket man. Yeah, until I just pass out. Ugh. And I always look the same. Like, once I... Li Dude, it's just... I look like Grogu when Grogu was just sleeping at one time. He was just like... Yeah, yeah. Cutter Freeman and Ace Breaker. They got like... Well, Cutter Freeman, I think, has 17 kids. Ace Breaker has 14. They both don't wear condoms. Neo Weed Spark. <laughs> Same. The only thing I can do while I'm high is play the game. You know, I can't really do that, guys, because I just can't stay focused. Like, I envy the people that can, like, play games for an extended period of time and be high. Because when I'm high as fuck, everything... I'm in the fucking game, bro. I'm in the fucking game, bro. Like, dude, I was playing... Um, I was playing Zombies one night. We were playing Black Ops 3 Zombies, and the edibles started kicking in. Bro, those zombie screams were a too close to home like a little too close to home man i remember at one point i was so far gone i took off the headset to go to the bathroom bro and all i heard was like i just the bathroom is like literally two feet away from me like when i open this door the door is right there and i went and then i remember like there's that awkward period in time where it's like my door is closed there's darkness in the hallway and then all i was hearing was just the zombie sounds like rah, rah, rah. but i was like it doesn't make sense because my headset is connected to my console so there should be no sound coming. Why do I hear the zombies? And at that point, I was like, I had to turn off the game, bro. I had to turn off the game, man. Whiskey is the water of life. Without it, there will be a civil war. Well, if there's a civil war from now until next Tuesday, I think you might be onto something. Yeah, man. If I was high as fuck and Tifa was with me, bro, it'd be over. I'd be so happy. That would be lovely, Moonshine. <laughs> Yo, you be playing Souls games and you high as fuck? How Dude, my brother is the same way. Like, I remember he would just, like, before, because he, he doesn't smoke anymore, but he would be, like, high as shit playing all the Dark Souls games. I was like, how do y'all fucking do this shit? Like, bro, when I'm high as fuck, I'm playing stuff that takes minimal involvement. I'm playing a Telltale shit. I'm playing, uh, I'm playing a turn-based RPG like I'm, I'm not doing no action shit, cause man, I don't. Mm. That was crazy, bro. Man, stop! First form cell was gonna absorb him. Oh god, terrifying. Mario Party while high. No, Mario Party while drunk. You would, you would try Hellblade two stream to solve puzzles while high. Oh no, you, you. I will tell you exactly what you would see. That would be a short stream, you guys. I'd just be up in there. I'd be like. That's it. That's the whole stream. That man said he platinum held in ring high as fuck. That should be one of your top gaming moments that you just remember. It's like, yeah, I was high as fuck and I platinum held in ring. I became the older Lord. You know what? There's hope for us all then. There's hope for us all. But yeah, you guys, I'm going to wrap it up here for the night. Thank you guys so much as always for coming. If you haven't, make sure you all hit that like button. There's the only time I told you guys to do that today. Helps out the channel tremendously. We will be back tomorrow night continuing our trek into the kingdom hearts data battles so that'll be going down i want to say like 7 p.m eastern standard time around there so yeah Yu-Gi-Oh is a good game to play when high actually um so yeah, i'll be happening around that time we're gonna do that and then uh yeah business as usual so you guys enjoy the rest of your mornings your evenings your afternoons eat a lot of great food have a lot of great sex Get a lot of quality gaming time in. 
And for me to you for now, my name is NGS signing out. And like always, I will catch you guys later. Peace out, y'all. Have a good one.